22 million black victims of Americanism are waking up and they're gaining a new political consciousness, becoming politically mature. And as they become, uh, develop this political maturity, they're able to see the recent trends in these uh, political elections. That any minority that has a block of votes that stick together is in a strategic position. Hey, either way you go, that's who gets it. You're, you're in a position to determine who go to the White House and who stay in the doghouse. You're the one who has that power. You, you and I have never seen democracy. All we've seen is hypocrisy. When we open our eyes today and look around America, we see America not through the eyes of someone who has, who has enjoyed the fruits of Americanism. We see America through the eyes of someone who has been the victim of Americanism. We don't see any American dream. We've experienced only the American nightmare. We haven't benefited from America's democracy. We've only suffered from America's hypocrisy. And the generation that's coming up now can see it. And are not afraid to say it. And I'm 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 and I'm not afraid to say it. And I'm not afraid to say it. Welcome. You are listening to Black Westchester Magazine Presents People Before Politics Radio every Sunday 6 to 8 on IndemixRadio.com starting today at 620. <laughs> <laughs> um, first and foremost, happy Father's Day to all the real fathers that hold it down. Um, you know, Mother's Day is one of them holidays. You can have a reservation and still can't get in. You still got to wait an hour. Father's Day, you can go into the, 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 the most expensive restaurants and just walk in and get seated mm. right away because no, <laughs> you don't even need a reservation. But, um, you know what I'm saying, Every, you know, people go all out. So Black Westchester, what we did, we did a, a Father's Day tribute to black fatherhood all that week long. Nice. Um, had a couple of pieces, um, memorable moments of movies of black fatherhood, like uh, Furious Styles from um, Boys in the Hood, and um, you know uh, various father, black father figures in the movies. Um, today we had Happy Father's Day. Um, the readers share their stories. Myself and ten or twelve other people um, sent them pictures of them and their father, and what their father means to them or their greatest moments um favorite memory of their father we did that today and um a couple of other pieces people pieces from previous uh pieces we did before for our fathers um fbi fathers fathers being involved i think that's what it was um organization uh parent group at a C, uh graham elementary um they had this thing and you see in the room the room was full of like a hundred black fathers and their children. It was oh, just a beautiful nice. thing. Um, and a couple other stories we did, you know, had a whole black father section on, on Black Westchester on the front page. So, you know, we wanted to pay some tribute because, you know, the narrative on black fatherhood is it does not exist. You know, mm -hmm. all fathers are Debbie dads. There are a lot of fathers out there that hold it down. And I just got to say for myself real quick, <clears throat> my dad, like, you know, my dad's dad was not in his life. So it was like my uncle who taught me how to play football, and my uncle who taught me how to play soccer. You know what I'm saying? I used to get upset like my dad's not my dad don't do these things with me. And you know, he never knew like uh, for a man to show love to a, to another male. You know what I'm saying? He knew yeah. that for so he always told my my sister, "I love you. I love you. I love you." I ain't never heard that growing up. You know what I'm saying? So oh, it's wow. just like so for a long time, so it was just like you know, I really didn't think my dad loved me at one point. Oh you God, know what I'm saying? So, sad. so, so. But what what was important is, I truly began to respect my father and all that he had done as a father when I became a father. And that's um, when you knew. That's yeah. when we became friends. 
that's when I realized I remembered, you know, all that he had to go through. We we he worked in Tarrytown and at General Motors and when I was seven he brought a house in Central Ice of Long Island, which That's is awesome. which is forty five minutes once you get off the bridge. Then, you know, Tarrytown's another twenty, thirty minutes. So like he took he this trip every day. Wow. And during snowstorms taking two and a half, three hours to get home. And then they had times where they would have changeover, and he would be out of work, and he would work overnight at this machine shop. And I remember his skin used to get burned from the hot metal and stuff, and you used to hate it. You know what I'm saying? Uh -huh. But he held it down, and it was just like those things as I got older and became a man, I realized how much my father did, and he was a great example of black fatherhood, working, taking care of your home at all means necessary, and the whole nine. And, you know, and I wrote that down in the little thing we did today. And, you know what I'm saying, when it's all said and done, I only hope that I am half the father and half the man that he was. Oh. Even he was such a great man, if I'm half the man he was, that still make me a great man. You know what oh, I'm saying? You know, for, so that's my, that's my testimony to my dad, Jerry Woodson. Shout out to my dad. And, um, you know, I figured I wanted to do that to start off the show. So. Beautiful. In the house, um, Dr. Bob Baskerville is spending time with his son for Father's Day. And Damon K. Jones is spending time with his family for Father's Day. Um, Cynthia Turnquest Jones is somewhere out there. <laughs> I've seen pictures of a, a pool or a beach or somewhere. <laughs> they, some with water, sprinkling water on everybody or something. <laughs> so she out there holding it down. And um, Brenda L. Crump, um, I guess she's tuning in. So um, Damon? I said Damon. I said oh. Damon uh, is celebrating with his family for oh, Father's that's Day. Right, you did, you did, right, right, right. So, but we all oh, we do have the lovely Lorraine Lopez in the house. Oh, I like coming here. I get called <laughs> lovely. <laughs> so, what have you been up since, the, since this, this last week? What have you been up to? Well, um, oh, oh, oh! I did my first video shoot. Not well. I didn't do anything. I just watched it. Okay, okay, um, okay. I went with Yonkers Voice to inter uh, um they were interviewing a county legislator. Okay. And I showed up, I surprised her and I just watched the whole thing go down, you know, how they record the questions, how they prep and stuff like that. Really fascinating stuff. I'm really looking forward to doing it again actually. That's what's up. That's what's up. We're trying to do more video interviews too. Um Oh yeah. Yeah, because um and I hope people who are listening don't take this the wrong way, even though it's true. People <laughs> would rather watch a video than read a lot of times. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, you, yeah. you post a video interview up, hey, everybody's watching. You put wor it's words, people are like, oh, yeah. if it's long, you know. And I have to admit, I have low attention span sometimes, too, even on the subjects that I love. You know, if it's, if it's long, I'm like, oh, I got to get back to this later. Like, you know, or, I, or, I'm, or, you know, I get interrupted. You know what I'm saying? So yeah. I don't get a chance to read the whole thing. So, But videos, people will watch a whole video, which Especially is great. Especially if they're interesting and if it's yeah. something that they're curious about. And that's, that's what's great about the show. Like, you know, it's the video that people can go back and watch. Yes. And they of do. the show, and they'll watch it, and they'll be like, yeah, I watched the first half, I'm going to watch the next half when I come home to work tomorrow. You know, they'll yeah. tell you like that. And I saw up to this part, I'm going to see the whole part in the middle of the night, you know, whatever, yep. whatever. So that's so. Or they that, just watch the whole thing. Right, 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 right. And then there's some people who watched, watch it live and then watch the video over. So we appreciate all of you. I um, have one person tell me that she gets a kick out of it every week. She says it's, it, this is a funny show. I mean, uh, so, I, I know she so, takes so, so. seriously... Well, they we take everything to, seriously, but she loves the humor. We, we have to, you have to have. To balance it. I, I always joke sometimes when Damon is getting really, really <laughs> deep. I have to do, I have to do Flavor Flav to his Chuck <laughs> D. You know, and bring a little comedy because, you know, I'd be like, yo, slow down, Damon. You're losing him. You know what I mean? You yeah. got to, you know, be, I got to be silly. Because, you know, if it was all, all serious, nobody wants to hear that all the time. No, and no, so, no. It would be like talk radio. Yeah, and so, I mean, you know, it, it, you have to have some humor. And, and we have we have our days where we do more laughing than anything else. <laughs> we, uh, you should see some of the early shows. Oh, you so, got to hear me. My daughter thinks I'm the corniest person ever. Well, that's that's children. Children will always think that of their parents. <laughs> My, 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 my daughter, uh, she likes it, but she's like, oh, okay, Dad. <laughs> uh, you could have went without the little jokes there, though. You know? <laughs> <laughs> you, know, you know, they're our biggest critics, though. So thank you for everybody who is listening and who's tuning in. Um, we are going to have, um, 
What is she running for? Cam She's running for county legislator in the 16th district. Yes, um, Nicole Benjamin will be gracing our studio for the first time. We were not able to get her last time she ran, um, even though she watches the show a lot. Oh, yeah. And she has called in once or twice. But this will be her first time actually in person, live and living color in the studio. Oh, that's cool. So um, we're going to be talking to her. And um, let me see that list that you have real quick. And we have to got to give got to give Lorraine a shout out. She is putting together Can a, I just some say one of our lists okay. for the next month or so. So we have Nicole Benjamin today, next Sunday, June twenty fifth. We're gonna have Sean Bell's mom. Mm -hmm. I know you know who Sean Bell is. Respect. And, you know what I'm saying? We're definitely gonna have her on, and that's gonna be um, really good. Um, July 2nd, at this point, I'm not sure if we're doing this show. I think we might be off the air. July 9th, we're going to have London Reyes, who's running for the 17th district yes. of of the uh, um, county legislators. So they're running for different districts. Okay. And we're Delphin, um, what's Huesler. his name? Huesler from the Yonkers Insider. They're both going to be on. July 16th, we're going to have Carmen Goldberg, who's running... Um, against Nicole on the 16th district for the county legislator for Ken Jenkins seat, right? Yes. So what seat is? Oh, London's running for Virginia Virginia, Virginia Perez's Paris. seat. Okay. Yes. Um, and Ken is giving up his seat. Right, right, because he's running for county, and you saw him on here. What was that last week? Was that, that last week or two weeks ago? Two weeks. Uh, well, yes. you saw him on here recently. Um, <laughs> last week. Um, <laughs> you know, my days run together so much less weeks. So um, on the 23rd, I'm not sure who's going to be here yet, but on July 30th, we have, you're going to have to spell the name for Corazon me. Corazon Pineda. Oh, there you go. What she said. She's a <laughs> city councilwoman in the city of Yonkers. Okay. So whose seat is she running for? She's, she's actually an incumbent. She has to Oh, she's an now, incumbent. Okay, okay. But... The story with her is that the Democratic Party did not endorse her. Oh. They endorsed yeah. a former council member oh. that she beat. So. You know, no, it's interesting. Um, and Reggie Lafayette won't like these words, but um, we had a um, councilman um, in Mount Vernon, Yana Yon, 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 Edwards, mm -hmm. and he wrote a, a, a editorial um, letter to the editor about um, having the county um, endorsement does not mean anything anymore. Um, just in Mount Vernon alone, um, the, the last three mayors that were endorsed um, lost. He had uh, endorsed Clinton when Ernie Davis won. He endorsed Ernie Davis when Clinton won. Also, and he endorsed, he endorsed Mayor Davis when Richard Thomas won. So he's so losing he, his mojo. So he's lost the last three mayoral races. Um, he lost to a county exec twice on a, on a bigger scale. And, you know, so, so it's not at one point because this is such a democratic, um, area, a heavy democratic area, um, lower Westchester, Mount Vernon, and New Rochelle and Yonkers, yes. um, having the endorsement was just about it. You know what I'm saying? Like that yeah, yeah. really, really meant all at one point, you know, yeah. especially before uh, Reggie Lafayette was there, when David Ford was there, like that meant something in Mount Vernon. Um, I don't know who was there before him on the county. David, but, somebody um, named David as well. David, uh, oh, okay. something. But, him. but you know, it, it's not having the same um, power. It, it doesn't have the same just because you have, and, 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 and the people who won last year, Andre Wallace, when he won, he went against the party. He was not endorsed by the party, and he won. I um, mean, but seriously, what does the party do? What, is, what do you do? You well, come I, out a couple of months right before election time instead of advocating and advertising and educating people the, the, the whole year so that when you do come out, people take notice? Well, I, I believe what is supposed to be the strength of having the endorsement of the party, and this is me speaking for my opinion, um, you then have the district leaders all carrying your petitions, petitions, which is a powerful point. And they, you know, they know everybody in the community. So, um, you know, you're, they're supposed, their petition is supposed to be reliable. Mm -hmm. um, and you have all, you have the power of that. And then, you know, whatever 
advertising and, and endorse, you know, promotion is done. Yeah, there you, yeah. That you have them you handing out that. the palm cards and okay. everything. So and then you get you the other the elected officials showing up at your events. Right, right, because all the incumbents and yes. everybody, you know. So, so, so that's supposed to be the strength of the party. Come on in. Come on in. How are, How you, are you doing? How are you doing? Live and living color. Nice Live and living color. Yeah. The lovely Nicole Benjamin has finally decided to grace our presence. Good. Thank you. She finally decided to grace our presence because, you know, we've been trying to get her on this show for a while now. But mm -hmm. she's always saying, oh, I'm too shy. I don't want to be on the radio. We got her now. She is here. So welcome, welcome, welcome. Oh, and let me give you an official round of applause. There you go. There you go. There you go. I didn't get to say happy Father's Day to everyone. Happy oh, yeah, Father's go ahead, Day. Go ahead, go ahead. Feliz Dia de los Padres, todo el mundo. And happy Father's Day to everyone in heaven and here on earth. Aha. Uh -huh. See, she brings that little bilingual stuff. I have no idea what she said, but what she said. Yeah. <laughs> you, didn't <laughs> so high you know what? I, I have to be honest. You cut class. No, 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 oh. no. There was this beautiful girl who go. came to the school who only spoke, spoke Spanish. Okay. And I learned just enough to talk to her. Okay. So, <laughs> and we'll leave it there. <laughs> so, and we'll leave it there. Okay. Yeah, so that, <laughs> that was my inspiration that I had to have her. That was her. Amused. That was, I had to have, and I learned enough to communicate with her. <laughs> and yes, and you know, that. Oh, look at him. He's so, blushing. So, so, yeah. But, um, no, I did not take. I mean, you know what? That took a lot of things. In gym, you know, when you have your, your things that you can take in gym, I took tennis. Because <laughs> that was where all the girls were. I didn't care nothing oh, about yeah. tennis. But it was, like a, it was like all, it was like two dudes and like 30, 40 women in there. So it was just like, I'm sitting there pretending I know what I'm doing. Uh -huh. Yeah, 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 yeah. You know, it was an easy grade, and you got to flirt with all the females during, in, in school. So, so you yeah. were the smart one. We, you know what? But most things dudes do for real, and then whether you admit it or not, ninety percent of the things that guys do in life are f to get the girl. Really? So, so no. Is so that listen, really true? Well, you, 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 you do what you got to do to make the money, so you have the money to buy the car, or the, the clothes, or whatever it is to get the girl. Is that you what, what a man say? does? You, to if get that's the, the case. I need you, a man. You gotta. You you do you do what you do to get the good job to get the girl. Now some people ought to get the girl to get a wife. Mm -hmm. Some people are just to continually get the girl. Get the girl. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? But all things that men do are inspired to get the girl. Oh, okay. You know what I'm saying? So, I mean, keeping it real, like, you know, most won't tell you that, though. But, you know. But that's their motivation. That's their motivation. And, okay. and rightfully so. I'm in here with two beautiful women right now. I mean, look all at right. that. Like, yo, you know. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? Like go. Yeah. Yo, when I was a rapper, I wanted to be. On the radio, so the girls could hear my, so the girls would hear my voice, and you know what I'm saying they buy my records, and then they would come to my shows, and you know, and but you so have on a and so forth. Voice. Oh well, thank you, you. Know that. thank you. Do you, say that to you. Oh, I've heard that once or twice. Yeah. yeah, but I, but you know, that's what it was. It was just like, you know, you this little rap group in this little corner, and you're doing it. You do shows to get the girls locally. You know what I'm saying? You throw the parties to get the girls locally. You wanted to impress the girls, so you wanted to be the best at the MC that night. So all the girls was feeling you. Let me you know ask you a question. Did you get the girls? Yeah, I've had I've more had than myself. I've had a few, yeah. A lot, um, 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 a lot lighter. I was a lot lighter, a lot thinner. But uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, but, um, no, you're a smooth talker. It doesn't matter. But um, I appreciate that. But, um, yeah, so that's, that, that's what we do. So then, you know, when I got on the radio, I wanted to be on the radio so all the girls would hear me. And then, you you know, you want to do shows so all the girls is who mm -hmm. you, you know, you want the fellas to hold it down, but you want to end with the girls. You know what I'm saying? So that's, so even like the whole thing that when we was in magazines, I wanted uh, the group to be in magazines so girls would see us in the magazines, you know, and the whole thing. And, you know, that that's what that whole thing was, to, you know. To impress the girls, you know. Yeah. So you you put forth your best effort. I mean, there's the competition with the dudes. Like you know, somebody did something really good, and you wanna you mm. wanna outdo that person. You know what I'm saying? But even in those situations, it's to impress. A lot of that is to impress the girls. So you just have to find the right female to impress. Well, you don't ah. always you don't always. I will admit though, um, in some situations, those that are impressed are not the ones that you want yeah. i mean that you need why, why not, is that? not need in your life need need not want need you know what i'm saying 
Okay. Um, no, it's it's cool. It's cool. I just pull your mic because you talk you talk low. Pull your mic closer to you. Okay. Yeah. Just I know move. you have the AC on, so I didn't want to. Oh, that, no, that's a, uh, okay. Yeah, and if it gets too cool, let me know. We can turn that off. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Um, Damon's not here. Damon's the one that's always hot. We used to have this joke. Damon would be sitting there. It'd be like midwinter, and he'd have the air on, and Cynthia would be sitting on this side, oh my with, God. just just about with a with a fur coat on. <laughs> <laughs> oh, too yeah. much so they would go back and forth about how hot it was, and yeah, yeah, that was. So he's that was enjoying a big his thing. Father's Day. He's enjoying his Father's Day. Everybody is enjoying their Father's Day. I, my daughter, and my father both live in Atlanta. I spoke oh. to both of them today. And, and he I, did that uh, thing with all the fathers that. Right, right. That we did. We, about we did the tribute. I sent it to you. I sent the tribute. We yeah. did it for the fathers. I just wanted to show some, you know, Lohud and News 12 and the Journal News, I mean, and Fios are not going to big up black fatherhood. Now, they're not, I mean, they're, not, they're really not going to do it. And it's, you know, that's not their thing. You know what I'm saying? But, you know, black Westchester has to. Mm. If nobody else is going to, we have to. So I've been, so all week long we had like little things for black fatherhood, right. you know, to uplift black fatherhood. To and, highlight you know. what's good that's going on in the black community. Right, 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 right. Because there are a lot of brothers, and as a matter of fact, not, there's a lot of brothers holding it down for their children. And more importantly, there are a lot of brothers taking care of somebody else's children. And there are a lot of brothers that are trying to take care of right. their children but are being uh, blocked. Now, I've, I've been through the whole system, so I understand that the system is not... Yeah, there, we, there's a lot more rights now for fathers than there used to be. No, but let me. Let my me daughter's tell you. 27, but I'm saying when my daughter was two and three, there wasn't the rights that fathers have now. Like they, we had no rights. The, the judge basically didn't even want to hear from me speaking. Like the, you know, they didn't want to hear from me. You so, have you have rights. You know, more rights now. And there's more advocate groups for fatherhood. Yeah. Um, yeah. Well, there, there, well, what, for example, CPS. You know, you have these these young kids being parents these days and unfortunately sometimes they can't take care of them and CPS has to step in and they do what they got to do. It's their job. It's the law and, and there's nothing wrong with that. But if they have, if there's a dad involved, they, ca they call the dad in. Of course, they take his social security number because they want to know all his whole background and they're, okay, that's fine. But then they ask him, do you smoke weed? Have you ever smoked drugs? Have you ever did drugs? Do you drink? If a father says, I, you know, I took a puff about a year ago at a party, they have to go through a three-month program Ooh, in no order one. to see their child. <laughs> that, that's changed. That's automatic. Have they asked me those questions back And then, then you know what happens, though? <laughs> they lose their job. Right. And they can't take care of the kids. So they're stuck. Right, right, you know, right, and right. and that's why they avoid sometimes being part of the system because if they do, well, well, there's a lot of things they do. If you if you have if you fall behind in your child support, they take away your licenses. Yeah. Not people think your driver's license. They take away all your license. Like if you're a licensed plumber, your license, hmm. all your licenses yeah. can be revoked. You, you understand what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So it's just like like I've known people that were recording artists who were making money. And they were large, but because they somehow fell back, they had their passports revoked, and they couldn't get passports. Oh, wow. So they couldn't do – they had a lot of money waiting from overseas. They couldn't even do those shows until they paid this – like, I guess they feel like, yo, well, we'll take it away, and then, you know, if you want it back, you'll pay for it. But when you live in areas like – like in New York, you can get around without a car. But you live in areas like Georgia, outside of the main city of Atlanta, but in the, mm -hmm. and you live in a lot of places even like even Long Island, even Rockland County, and Upper Westchester. Yeah, where I live in if Boston. you do not have a car, um, it's hard for you to get right. to where jobs are. You know what I'm saying? Right. So then, so then you you can't go get work, and then you can't. You know what you I'm can't saying? Take care of your and, and and the and the problem I have with that, I understand what they're saying, but there are too many people who have DWIs and they're on their third and their fourth one and they have limit restriction licenses to go back and forth to work in school but they won't do that for the father that, see, that's you, right. you understand that's what I'm saying right. but so, so so dudes that have actually drunk and drive and almost hurt people can get a limited a, a limited get that restricted license but a father cuz he's behind and he can't catch up or for whatever the reason is maybe maybe he didn't pay and he was supposed to pay whatever it was but he can't even get a restricted license, and that's and that's a big problem. And a lot of father advocate groups are working on that. And I don't know where it is now, but I know that's okay, that's okay. been a big problem. So I know a lot of people that don't have licenses, and then you then you're left to you're left to then drive dirty 
because you, I mean, you bottom line got to go to work. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And then now if you get caught for that, you know what I'm saying? It's, it's, you know, you still get treated the worse than someone who has a DWI. Mm -hmm. I was thinking that sometimes uh, we hurt ourselves by getting the system involved. Absolutely, and, absolutely, and absolutely. a lot of times we don't necessarily have the necessary financial resources to avoid being involved in the system. A absolutely. Mm -hmm. um, a, many people who I know are CPS workers will tell me if they get a call from Chappaqua, that whole investigation will be shut down because they will say, oh, my attorney is going to write to you right, and right. Um, you have no right to enter my home. So we, wow. if you don't have the resources, unfortunately, you get caught up in the system and we end up hurting ourselves because we use the system as an arbitrator between parents or whatever the issue may be. Meanwhile, the system doesn't have the best interests of our children at heart. I mean, we have, we have we're getting off this topic alone, we have Valhalla's full of a lot of people who couldn't pay bail. Like, you know what I'm saying? Oh, they got yeah, arrested for Jay something. Jay -Z could, something. Could not oh, make, uh, right, 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 right. Yeah, right. Yeah, yeah, we, we wrote about that too um, on Black White Show. But it's just I like, they, um, uh, it's a lot of people are sitting in jail for over a year because they couldn't afford bail. They couldn't afford to be bailed out. And then it was maybe for something they didn't even do. And then, you know, you know yeah. what happens? You do something you get to survive while you're in there. And then, you know. You, you know, so anyway, yes. that was a nice story, though. <laughs> um, Ken Bright, um, great info, AJ, on losing of licenses. That's the point to set you back economically, which creates a domino effect on the quality of life for the families and community. The disenfranchisement structure. I t I do agree with you, Ken. Very true. I do agree. I do agree. Um. Shout out to Ken uh, Bright, who's listening, and everybody else who's tuned in. I haven't shared it on everybody's page yet. Um, it's on my page. If you want to, you can share it on your page, the, the Facebook Live. Oh, because the questions come up now? Yeah. Yeah. It, it, if you go to my page, the person in the comment section just wrote that, and the questions come right up. Um, so. I'll just look all Okay. Do you have now Father's Day? Um, you have any Father's Day shout outs? Um, just all of the men okay, who I know okay. who are supportive and consistent and stable and okay. reliable and there for their families. Right. I want to shout them out. And okay. I do know a lot of good men. Okay, okay. And, 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 and even though this is about the brothers and about fathers, um, Hector Santiago said love is love. Shout oh, hi, to Hector. Hector. Hey, Hector. Uh, um, um, what up, nephew? There, there are a lot of single women who have had to be both mother and father, who have had to hold it down. So shout to those women, too. See, I mean, but I don't like women. when people say that. Well, I mean, but I know a lot of women who have been mother and father right. to their child. And yeah, and there are a lot of dads that have both been both and dad you know what? and mom, and, and they getting, don't say happy Mother's Day to them. Well, I call it, I say happy Brother's Day to them. Oh, yes, I do. Cool. Yeah, I, I've said that all the time. Like so that. to the brothers that are holding it down, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, Raising cool. someone else's child, or you know, I like I have a cousin, um, Wayne Robinson. He's from New Rochelle. He lives in Atlanta. Um, when I was getting divorced, I, I stayed with him for a minute because he had um, he has five boys. Wow. At the time, he had custody of of four, three of them, and the other one was staying with him. And he was by any means necessary holding it down, even when he didn't have a car or renting a house. And, you know, I ended up staying with him because, you know, the whole transition from divorce thing, you know, the mm -hmm. wife gets everything, so you kind of have to start over. And I basically took care of the kids, you know what I'm saying, my, my nephews. And um, then eventually his oldest son who lived in the Rochelle, who his mother would not let him see his father, when he got old enough, said, I want to live with my father. And then he was old enough to be in the house, you know, for the minor kids. And yeah. he has, he, he's raising five sons. He's a grandfather now. Wow. Um, but shout to him. He's a, he's a glowing example of a brother who's holding it down. Now, you know, like a lot of brothers, he, every decision might not have been the right decision. You might not agree with some of the functions and way that he raises his household. But, I mean, he he is a success story, in my, and he's one of the success stories, one of many success stories that you don't hear. Like, like that's what... Um, like Hector Santiago. Yeah, oh, he has children? 
Yeah, he's got two little girls. Oh, okay, okay. I was going to say, just like the other piece I did about the movies, Black Fathers and Movies, uh -huh. Daddy's Little Girl. He ended up raising all three of his. He It was the whole transition of getting his three girls and mm -hmm. he taking care of his three girls, his little girls. There are a lot of situations like that where it's the man who's the single parent and raising their children. But you don't normally hear or read those. That's why that, that movie was good because it helps change the narrative that these things do exist. You know what I'm saying? And even when they tried to throw everything at him, the fact that he was able to prevail through all of that was a beautiful thing. So, yeah. And we need to see more of that in Hollywood. Um, you know, it took a black man and, to make that and happen. And you on know. the news, period. Well, like they don't general, show, you know, the yeah. news, the news for good and bad, <clears throat> and I do news. So for, oh. for good for, no, but seriously, <laughs> as you try to do as much good, we try to do as much good news as possible. Mm -hmm. A lot of people knock and say, oh, you don't put out good news. Like, you know, the stuff we just, some of the stories I just named, those are good news things. Mm -hmm. But some of those stories did not get hits, though. But the negative news everyone of pays course. attention to. You know, every time the city council and the mayor of Mount Vernon go at it, oh, I get plenty of hits. I'm like, I get hits through the roof. You know what I'm saying? There's another lawsuit against Mount Vernon. I get hits through the roof. Another black man is killed by, by the police. I get hits through the roof. You know what I'm saying? You had, um, I there's many stories we've had that I, I can't pay people to go, you know, like seriously, yeah, like, yeah. and the people who say you don't, you don't do positive news, those people haven't read the positive stories. You understand what I'm saying? It's like, you know, they haven't even read it. But but with the news media, when you're with corporations, basically the bottom line is if it bleeds, it leads. So, I mean, you know what I mean? And that's 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 the the untold, you know, the written thing there. So, you know, you get more you get more ratings for showing the black man who you know what I'm saying, is a murderer than the positive black man. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. yeah. But they do, every now and then, I give them their credit, because when Cupcake Cutie, one of our sponsors, when they had the um, gingerbread house party, and it was for kids, it was a group called uh, Girls Who Bake, and it was like teaching them happens. how to do the gingerbread house and do all of this, and teaching young girls about being bakers and stuff like that. News 12 and Files both came oh, that's and cool. covered it. You, you understand yeah. what I'm saying? Yeah. Andre Wallace gave up the second floor of his building, and they, they the third floor of his building, and they, they were there. So, like, there is some positive news on there, you know. And so, you know, but for the most part, if it, lead, if it bleeds, it leads. And, okay. you know, and, 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 and the people have to, um, I blame the people as well because that's what they run for. They run, they run at, uh, you know, they run at those stories that, those negative stories, you know. Uh, news is an acronym for notable. Events, uh, weather, and sports. Yeah. Oh, notable events. Events. Yeah, weather and sports. That's what news is an acronym for. <laughs> uh, that's that's what Hector wrote. But Hector I want to get to. Hector wants to come back, by the way. Hector is always welcome. Hector, he knows come that. Back. He knows that. He is always welcome. Uh, we have not seen him for a while. So now we have Nicole Penchman in the house. Now, you were talking about, what were you talking about, CP? What was the organization? CBS? CBS. CBS. C C are you, have you worked with them or have you had? I have worked with CBS. Okay, because I was like, you sounded very knowledgeable. Knowledgeable. Yeah. Like, like you, okay. So, um, so who is Nicole Benjamin, for those who don't know? Who is Nicole Benjamin? Um... Let me answer that question first. So okay. I have been a licensed social worker, so I got my master's from okay. um, Fordham, and I got my bachelor's in sociology from Yale. So for about 20 years, I've been a social worker. So wow. I have a good understanding of social issues and the diverse populations that are served as a county legislator and okay. the issues that need to be addressed. Do you work so for the county? Currently, I do. Yeah, okay. Okay, okay, okay. So, so I was a preventive case manager supervisor. What does that oh. mean? Um, so preventive services is um, to pr keep families unified. So you work with not just the kid, but the families to implement uh, services. And you give them a certain amount of time because they may have been under ACS investigation. So they get 12 months to 18 months to oh. appear before the judge to say that they've uh, participated in all of the preventive services to keep their parental rights. Okay, okay, okay. So now, now, um, you're in a heated race. It's uh, four people? Is it four yes, people? four people. Okay, um, 
why should everyone vote for you? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No. Uh, okay. Well, um, not to focus too much on my competitors. Right. Yes, but I must bring it up. Okay, so, okay. So as you know... Uh, and you know they're all going to be on I'm in sure the upcoming be. weeks. I know, okay. yes. I know yeah. all three of them, by the but, way. But what I'm saying, they can't refuse. Okay. So one of my competitors is former councilwoman and former Yonkers Party Chair, Simmer Brandon. Okay. And in light of all of the development that is going on in Yonkers, the rapid development, mm -hmm. as you know, most of those jobs are not going to local unions and local people. They're coming, even when I interviewed with some of the unions, they're concerned that the workers and the development developers are coming from Maryland, New Jersey, as far as away as Pennsylvania. Pennsylvania yeah. And these Yonkers people are not benefiting. Yonkers unions people are not benefiting. Uh, so the point that I was making is that in light of all the rapid development that occurred under her leadership, uh, when Simra was party chair, uh, Yonkers had a Democratic majority. Right now they don't. Mm -hmm. She was party chair for six years, and under her aegis, uh, she had an opportunity to bring her Democratic caucus together to put forth legislation that would ensure local jobs for local people. And all of this development was going on under her leadership. Mm -hmm. Now the Democratic caucus is no longer in the majority. Um, that brings into point about my other competitor, current councilman Christopher Johnson, who, has, who is on the city council. And when they were in the majority, he did not use his position nor his voice to put forth legislation for the people of, of Yonkers for local jobs. And as you know, jobs, AJ, is the bottom line. Because if there is their strong economy and people have jobs, then they can afford the housing. The housing in Yonkers is now astronomical. Ginsburg just put up two buildings on both sides of me, uh, oh, close to the Hastings uh, borderline. Mm. And a studio there is 1900 a one bedroom is three thousand uh, dollars. When I've been knocking on doors, there people are telling me. A mom's knock on. When I knock on doors, they say I have to move out of Yonkers. I'm moving to Cortland because I will forever be in a situation where I am sleeping in the bedroom and my son is sleeping on the couch in the living room. Mm. And what kind of life is that for me to be living? So I can understand that people are talking about economics. They, they oh, should. The yeah, no, oh, they keep okay. And then um, in terms of jobs, so many people are working multiple part-time jobs to make ends meet. So Absolutely. If you, so if you are underemployed and not fully employed, you cannot survive in Yonkers. <laughs> hey, Hector came Hey, Hector walked <laughs> in. You heard us. Have a seat. Have a seat. the whole time? No, no. Oh, my God. I saw pull up, so why not? Welcome, welcome. 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 Hey, this is good public. How you doing? Good. Yankees is in the house. That's right. Yes, yes, yes. And my last opponents, I mentioned uh, former Same councilwoman man. and no, the no, let me ask you a question. So last two years ago you ran for what? The same seat. So oh, okay, okay. Right. And, I and you were running against and who the you last time. You ran wow. against Ken. I ran against the Okay, incumbent. okay, okay, yeah. okay. Good. So then with regard to my uh, other opponent, Carmen Gomez, mm -hmm. uh, just a few years ago. She was a Republican, and currently all of her uh, fundraisers are sponsored by people who are devout Republicans. So she's a di she's a dino. Well, Democrats Grace, in name only. Well, you see Grace Barani's name <laughs> on her most recent uh, fundraiser, who is a devout Republican. Okay. So how can the community trust someone who just ran as a Republican and lost miserably as a Republican? when she ran for county I mean, legislator that's, that's, the last time. That's so the way to go, Janet, right. Janet D. Fior. Right. So I mean. that being said, um, the Democratic values haven't changed, but what has changed? So why now do you want to run in a Democratic district? Our, the 16th district has never put forth a Republican in that race because the numbers are heavily Democratic. So those, I, that's all I'm going to say about my three candidates. The three candidates as to why I am the better choice. Okay. okay. And okay. I'm a hard worker. If I got forty percent the last time without party support right, right, and with right. no money, 
uh, and I've been involved in the community for a long time. Um, perfect example is that I've been a member of Aquahung for about five years, the Yonkers Women's Democratic Club. I've never seen Carmen Goldberg at any of those, even though she's now a newfound Democrat. I've never seen Carmen Goldberg at Reggie Lafayette's breakfasts nor his dinners. I've never seen Carmen Goldberg at Yonkers City Party breakfasts, except this year was the first I time Carmen I saw Carmen Goldberg her. yesterday. Re Reggie won't let me at his dinners. Well, I'm no, I'm just playing. No, I'm just playing. No, I'm just joking. I'm, jo I'm joking, and Reggie. That she, I'm joking. You can come here and ask her <laughs> if she's ever been president. That except for a couple months ago, I saw her at the first breakfast that they okay. had. Okay. Okay. Wow. Wow. You know, like you, we, even in the nonpartisan groups I'm involved in, I don't see her in diverse nonpartisan groups. And that's what we we were talking about the, before you got here. Um, the last like 2015 showed a lot of uh, a lot of people who beat the party or who uh, came like close to. You don't to, really to, need to, the party to, anymore. With like like we had, we had we had we had a, um, a candidate Janet Duarte who ran. And she wasn't in the Democratic primary, so she only basically ran those 58 days between the primary and the election, and she got over 2,000 votes. Well, I must. You, you understand what I'm saying? Like she, you know, which is amazing. Right. Like just on the independent line. Well, you know I'm, what I'm saying? I wow. must say that Janet is very hardworking. Um, I'm also a member of Junior League of okay. Bronxville, and okay. Janet is part of that community service. She did say something about Bronxville. Right, she, and she, we're she, in yeah. the same club, and okay. she's part of that whole community outreach, and I was their government and public policy chair. Right. So well, I'm out there. Well, now, I think they... Um, and they she won't like me saying it. They they picked her this year, though. Yeah. Because I guess because of the, the momentum. She works hard. They, so they endorsed her this year. Yeah. <laughs> you cannot take that away from her. Yeah. Go ahead. I was just going to ask, do you have a campaign uh, website? Not yet. Okay. So you also, and I, you know, you said 40% of the vote, and that was without. That's a lot. That was without major advertising. That was, there wasn't, I'm not saying you didn't well, have palm cards. the money. Right, and I'm saying you didn't have, and you, you didn't have, I'm not saying you have any palm card, but it wasn't like you didn't have, didn't have you didn't have what your, what your, what your, your, you know, opponent had. Well, and then the other thing is I didn't even have money from mail. So right. I scraped together a couple dollars to send out mail just for prime voters right. the day before the primary. Right. And, and, so, and you know you need about three mailers right. to all voters, not just prime. Right, right. But that's, that's what I'm saying. When you look at 40%. With those obstacles, that's no it's, it's even more impressive. No lawn signs, right, right. no posters. Right, um, right, 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 right. Do you yes. have all that this time, Laura? I'm working on the money. The okay. money's the problem. You need at least um, thirty to fifty thousand to run run the race. So, 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 so. Okay, so for those out there listening, and yes, because this is can, because this is on video, they can and they can watch at it at NicoleYonkers.com. <laughs> okay, but I'm just saying. What, for those listening and for those who will listen, because, again, this is on video and anybody can listen anytime from now to the primary, why should they put their money in you? What, what, mm. what, what? Well, first of all, I'm not beholden to anyone. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't have the uh, allegiances that most of those other people have to whomever. So I'm an independent and fresh voice. Yonkers needs a new vision. They don't need to be recycling the same old people from forever. Uh, they need to move forward with a new vision and a new, new perspective about how to make it a win-win situation in negotiations and bring jobs and money to Yonkers. Now, can I, let, let me ask you a question. Um, you said you work for the county, am I correct? Yeah. Do you have people that respond in a negative way uh, and say something to the effect about, you know, you're a Democrat running, but you work for a Republican? First of all, I'm Because that's, it, it, it does, well, you know, when people are running, people do mention stuff like right, that. Right, but the thing is, is that I'm qualified. Mm -hmm. I'm not a political hack like most of these people who just get jobs because they have no qualifications and they put them there and they don't even pass the test. Uh -huh. Um, I am a New York State licensed social worker, so I do have above and beyond the, the licensure and education that's needed, and I got number one when I took my civil service test. Mm -hmm. So oh, regardless good. of what anybody said, I scored the highest, I am qualified, I need a job, I am a single mother, um, and I need to work and keep a roof over my daughter's head just like everybody else, and I can relate to what is going on with the community. I'm not out here 
people working for three different jobs for elected officials, mm -hmm. like my opponents, who are, some may say, political hacks, who get their job as a result of being the favors that they give or whatever they do, um, and who have, people are saying, have a conflict of interest of sitting on city council, working for the Senate, and then still passing legislation for the city. So we, well, whatever people say, I am qualified and I, and I took the exam. So whatever people want to say, I need a job, like we, everybody we, else. We, two things. Well, well one, we, um, we definitely asked Chris Johnson about that. Um, when he came two years ago, um, that was that was definitely something that um, a lot of people were concerned about. Which and it still is a concern, and, I'm and sure. it was, and um, he's coming sometime in the next two, three weeks or whatever. And we will definitely um, um, ask him about that again. Um, but now, what I wanted to ask, and as a clarification, you said you need a job. Are you only running because you need a job? Like, like, <laughs> no, because no. we have people that they, no. they running because okay. like literally. I do have to say one thing. Because like Andre Wallace is like, you know, I got a job. I don't need a job. Like everybody no, comes here because they need a job. You well, know. Well, so. let me make a point saying mm. that and how to distinguish myself from also my opponents. I'm pretty sure uh, you guys know that Chris lived in the Bronx when he ran. Um, and not only did he live in the Bronx, but he never had a job. He just graduated from college. And I believe that he started working for Senator Stuart Cousins. Okay. I don't know Simra's past, but as long as I've known, I know she worked for the county. I know she works for Stuart Cousins. She was party chair and, and city council. Oh, she was Stuart Cousins. Can I just say that yes. when, when Simra was in the city council, she was my mentor because I was in the city council as well. And she showed me the ropes. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So that's I just your want a little disclaimer. disclaimer. Yes. yes. And, and I was in Carmen Gober's house yesterday, so that's another disclaimer. I and I don't know anything about Johnson. Okay. <laughs> um, so that being, but what distinguishes me mm -hmm. is that from the time I graduated from college, uh, which has been about 20 years, I've had real jobs. I've, I worked for Feggs on Jerome Avenue as a counselor. With Micah clients. Now, what is that? Fake? What is that? Fags. It used to be a outpatient program. Okay. Mentally ill, chemically abusing clients. So okay. I did groups and individual therapy and job placement, which was called Vested at the time. Oh okay. yeah, Vested. Okay. Yeah. So I worked there. Then I went on to work at North Central Bronx Hospital. I worked on inpatient psych, doing discharge planning, which is not easy. Those are people, and I did inpatient psych, uh, um, ER, when people come in and they're. Uh, mentally unstable. Uh, I also worked at Children's Village. I also worked mm. at I got New a cousin York, up there, Children's and New, Village. Yeah. And New York City Department of Health and their AOT program, assisted outpatient treatment. So those people are mentally ill, but they're not compliant, and they have a um, violent history. So they also have some court, they're court mandated clients. And I also did private work for the Supreme Courts in Manhattan, Queens. Uh, and the Bronx doing guardianship, uh, AOT, uh, not AOT, um, K Article 81 cases of people who are deemed incapacitated by the city. Mm. Mm. So mm. I have, yeah. <laughs> shout, well, shout out to my cousin Warren Kent. He's been up uh, Children's yeah, Village he, for years. He goes oh, you to, know, you know, my the greatest centennial. I yeah, that's been, yes. See a usher or a trustee. Yes, yes, yeah. yes, 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 yeah. yes. That's my younger cousin. He, uh, okay. yeah. So, um, yeah, he said he'd been there for years. He said, yeah. uh, so I figured most people must know him. Yeah. 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 Okay. And he gave, stood up one Sunday and gave his testimony about tithing. So, uh, yeah. Oh, okay. <laughs> okay. Okay. Do you go to Centennial a lot? Or no? Um, yes. Oh, yeah. okay. Yeah. I am a member of Centennial. I do with, um, I live right around the corner. Oh. And literally, um, they broadcast live on the internet. Because I keep crazy hours, I often attend Bedside Baptist. Yeah. <laughs> I just open my laptop. You think I'm serious? I have literally done this. I have opened my laptop. I have watched it. First Sunday, I've got dressed. 
I have run around the corner, handed in my tie. You went right in the door, handed in my <laughs> tie, took my co- communion, and walked out the other back door, <laughs> back around the corner. I literally <laughs> have done that, though. So I have done that. Then when my pastor, who was from Georgia, came to town, I was you like, yo, he's question. in town? I said, oh, I got dressed. I ran around the corner real quick. But so, it's yeah. nice to have a church family. I mean, yeah, No, no, no. That is. is my church family. And even, yeah. And, and, and literally a lot of my family does go to there. Today I visited Grace, though. I had a... I have a, a few sorrows in there. So, okay, yeah. okay. I have a lot of family in Grace, too. Yeah. yeah. It's yeah. a good service. Yeah. So although I live in Yonkers, it's not, uh, I'm going for the word. Well, well gra- not, Grace, Grace, Grace it's, is, they're is both not. They're in Mount Vernon. Well, yeah. one, one Grace is, and Centennial is becoming more like that. Grace is not a Mount Vernon church. Grace is a county church. Oh, okay. What I meant by that, like, you know, and I always say that because, like, Mount Vernon, elected officials will be going there. Mm-hmm. Most of those people can't vote for them anyway because most of them are not Mount Vernon residents. Yeah. Those are people. Grace got people coming from Philly that come, <laughs> like, literally drive from Philly. Wow. But, but, but Centennial has, I got cousins in the Bronx and cousins in Brooklyn and in Queens, actually, and they all come to Centennial. So, like, they couldn't vote for, uh, you know, right. uh, a Mount Vernon race or even a, a county race, you know right. what I'm saying, because they're not even in the county. Yeah. Okay. But I mean, that do not not go because of those reasons though. But I'm just yeah. I'm just saying. So I, I have to change the subject real quick because yes. I have Hector real right here, and okay. I have to have Hector. Um, so I, and I just I'm just you know me just being me. So I was looking on Facebook and I saw this coffee with a cop thing, and I'm like, you know what? This whole interaction with the cops in the, in the community. I said, man, that's a whole lot like what, what Hector was doing. When they try to do something, so, they try to uh, they try to they try to follow bingo. up. Did they try to follow up on his thing, but without him? No. Right, <laughs> yeah. So I, I, I definitely don't want to discredit uh, Coffee with the Cop. Coffee with the Cop is a national thing. It's like my brother's keeper. Right, right, right. Um, any city, state, county can pick it up and, and run the initiative. Um, I think the difference between um, I pull your mic a little closer too, so we can hear. You. I think the difference between Coffee with a Cop and Stop and Shake is that um, Coffee with a Cop is really general. It's like hey, and, and it's only targeting adults. Okay. Um, you know, because kids don't drink coffee, teenagers right, right, right. don't drink coffee, right, right. Um, and the times that they're doing it, they're in school or right. in college. Right. So um, I guess you know anything that helps, you know, it's there. It's something that any police department can reach out and just get the curriculum for, um, and, and, and the, Call the, the formula, police uh-huh. right? Um, the difference with that is Stop and Shake is more targeted. Stop and Shake has become more of a social icebreaker for everyone and anyone. This right. is more interpersonal. It it, it, it it actually takes officers who care, want to do something, and um, and want to be personable in the community. Right. Um, and also, I don't I don't let it get run like that, you know. Um, well, I mean, you know, and I said it more of a been, joke, but I mean, you know. No, no, right, right, because a few people have asked me. I was like, I was yeah, like, yeah, I was like, I was like, I was like, this. like yo, ho, yo, hey, yeah, coffee like, with a cop, what's up? Yeah. You need to roll up? I'm like, yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> we're good, bro, you know, just go get your free coffee. Right, <laughs> right, 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 right. But, um, you, so yeah, they're running it in, in, in Mount Vernon, they picked up the, the coffee with a cop. I remember when Yonkers did it. Um, at first, I didn't understand it. I, I got an email that morning and said, yo, Hector, they're doing coffee for the cops today. And I was like, wait, what? Right. And this is before I looked it up and everything. I just showed up at Coffee with the Cops and gave out like three dozen T-shirts, Stop and Shake right, T-shirts right, there. Right, right, right. You know, so it was it was pretty cool. But what I, w- <laughs> but what I, what I, what I will say, and then we have a caller. What I will say, though, um, I went to the last two Stop and Shakes that you did have, mm-hmm. one in front of Steam House and one somewhere else, and... I was a little disappointed that they have a better. It was better received by the police department as a whole. Like police officers were putting it on their Facebook page, and relatives of police right. officers putting it on their Facebook page. Right, now get the and call because we're gonna touch on my you, you know what I'm saying. And then and right, then right, and right. then and then um and then like I was out with you and you know like Dave Clark and one other cop was there. Right. And, other right. people didn't know what was going on, and right. you know, I mean, other yeah. cops didn't even know around the corner. Didn't even Listen, know it was going right. on that I've, day. I've never gone through no situation in any other place like I have in Mount Vernon with Stop and Shake. We, um, we 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 have a um, we have a caller on the line. Um, caller, please state your name and your purpose for calling. Hi, it's Gail Baxter. My purpose hey, for calling Gail. is this way. Hi, Gail. Hi, Gail. Nicole. Hi, Hector. Hi, Lorraine. Hi, Gail. 
Hi, sweetie. What about um, hi, AJ? Oh, <laughs> oh, AJ, you know, take it for granted. Hi, AJ. Um, usually I look for an email from you indicating who's going to be on your show, and I didn't get one today. So I said, let me just listen. So, Nicole. Yes. I have a couple of questions for you. I think you need to, you know, state out there exactly. I've listened to you. One thing that you did not mention is that you have a law degree. Oh, yes. Thank you, Gail. Which is very that. impressive. Yes, I have a... Uh, which which a makes you above everybody. Thank you, Gail. Go, Gail. <laughs> okay, okay. You, you know, but here's my question, and, I'm, and I, I want the answer because I don't know. Is that six... Legislative district only for either blacks or minorities. Is mm. that the way that seat was drawn up? And my second question is, and I know we've had long chats, what would your vision be that would um, go in a different direction from Ken, who's held that seat for several years? Okay. In to great, two great questions. To my understanding, that the city council um, seats were the ones that are set right. aside and drawn as minority districts to represent those communities, particularly District 1 uh, for right. African Americans and District 2 for Latinos, even though it's been held by someone of Muslim, Arab descent in the past. But currently, it's been, it's been a Latino seat. With regard to the county legislator seats, uh, there is no such mandate. However, uh, as you know, historically, the 16th legislative district has been held by an African American. Uh, so to, to ensure that there is African American representation in Yonkers, uh, which would be interesting to say the least if there was no longer african-american representation on the westchester county uh legislator legislator board um and the people should be speaking up i don't think people really understand that we do african-americans do risk losing a voice on the county board okay now, but you, great question gail just a follow-up on that um the 16th seat, is that the seat that was held by um, Herman, somebody? Yes, okay, Herman, yes. him, him and um, Ernie Davis were the yes. two first two black African-American county legislators, right. period. Yes. You know and, what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And I just wonder, yeah. And since then, it has been one um, from Yonkers, his, historically. Oh, okay. One African-American from Yonkers. Okay. And then what sets me apart, Gail, which is a great question, is that, um, as I said earlier, that I'm not beholden to anybody. I think Yonkers needs a new voice, and I do think that I am so involved with so many different groups. I represent much more diversity than my competitors. Um, right. I can say that th my competitors, Gail, when I see all of them, uh, I do not see diversity when they are walking. They're usually with people of their own ethnicity, our district is very diverse. We have a large Jewish population, Italian population, Latino population. We have homeowners. We have rentals. We have condos. We have uh, co-ops. Central yeah. Avenue uh, looks different from Warburton. Uh, right. The waterfront looks different from Tuckahoe Road, where we are right now. And, right. I, and I don't feel that my competitors would bring the diversity. Uh, when I see Miss. Gomez's um, literature. It's usually some Latino group endorsing her, which I understand affinity groups. People have to endorse who they are, but the district is so much more than that, and I don't want us to be shortchanged. The other issue that I brought up last time is that, um, not to say anything negative about my predecessor, but he was constantly in litigation with the county. And how can you move forward when you're constantly in litigation? And where, how, where do you have room to bring money to the people when you're constantly fighting? It ha you, ha you need someone who is adept at compromise. Going back to what Gail said, I do have a law degree. And my, one of my seminars in concentration was in mediation. Uh, and I also took labor law mediation negotiation. So I have those skills. So that's what makes me um, 
better candidate? Well, I just wanted to call in because I just, as I listened, I thought you were pretty much underselling your ability mm -hmm. to Thank do that. Thank you, Gail. <laughs> I do try to be modest. Yes, I know, but, uh, you know, kick that to the curb and bring a knife <laughs> to the front, okay? You know, I tell you that all the time, it's, Nicole. It's so it's funny, Gail, that you say that, because I was chatting yesterday with Janet Duarte, who is also the unendorsed independent candidate from Mount Vernon, though, and she was saying mm -hmm. that she gets criticized for being diplomatic. And I said, I get the same thing. And she said, but there has to be room for everybody. You don't need to get into the dirt with everybody. So exactly. we have to be able to elevate the discourse in politics. Yes, but unfortunately, and I am well aware, I'm as you know, you, your competitors, you, the other candidates, are not as diligent about being courteous and honest. So not that I would encourage you to... Uh, be nasty, definitely highlight your ability to no, work with people. Thank you, Gail. Thank you. I appreciate it. You're that. welcome. I wish I had known that you were going to be on so I could have made some calls. Okay. Gail, yeah, you are awesome. We all love you. And thank you for the text. I love right you, here. Hector. Thank, thank you. Thank you for the text. My thank phone's you. dying. I just put it to charge. <laughs> yeah, I, I have to say, and as far as. Hector Santiago, I would have died when I had my recent stroke. And the only thing, one of the only things I had to look forward to beside my faith in God was Hector's early morning calls <laughs> to my hospital bed. Yes. Keeping me again. alive, keeping me alert, keeping me thinking. So thing. I That's will always love thing. Hector. And we still have to do lunch, so. That's right, Hector. Thank you. Well, Gail, as always, we thank you for calling and, and, con and your contribution and following, um, listening to people before politics and reading Black Westchester. Oh, absolutely. I don't know any other way to spend my Sunday evening at this point. <laughs> oh, that's so and, sweet. You know, I, I'm very glad that Gail called in simply right. because when I'm knocking on doors, the average voter is very uninformed. Right. And they're just saying, as long as the person's a Democrat, they'll sign. Well, you know but what? They're it, not thinking about the, the issues, right. the stance, mm -hmm. the temperament of their elected official. They're right. just saying, if they're a Democrat, they'll sign. I, I saw this in Mount Vernon, right. and I'm realizing that it's not just Mount Vernon, but throughout Westchester a lot. The power base, the incumbents, those in power, they um, they they benefit. They actually count on People the uninformed. the uninformed. And sometimes misinformed uh, vote uh, voters. Um, they that just this, happened in Mount Vernon. Yeah, yeah. They're, they're, um, you know, um, there are just a lot of people that don't know. I mean, we're at a point where, where you said we're at a point now where there are a lot of people, yeah, homeowners. I meet them now. So I be meeting them in different places, especially outside of Mount Vernon. People from Mount Vernon. They're homeowners in Mount Vernon. You know, with their kids in soccer, whatever, whatever, whatever. You know, they work and they go back to the to the job, and then they got to do whatever they got to do with their kids and whatever activities they got. They really are just getting through life, like you know what I'm saying, right, surviving. Right. That. They don't really, unless it's major, major news. Like they really don't know what's going on the infighting in City Hall and the stuff that the stuff that's going on <laughs> with the mayor and you know why people are picking on like they really didn't like some of them are starting to pay attention but they were like what what the hell is all this about you know because they, they they really don't have time in their day-to-day -to, -day to even follow that you know what i'm saying and so then they don't know and and then once the person comes out and says whatever they say especially if they're the incumbent you want to believe that person because they're your mayor or whoever mm -hmm. and 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 they and they, they um and i'm not um highlighting just Mount Vernon. I'm talking about throughout Westchester at this point because, you know, everything we say has to be anti-Richard Thomas, but, you know, according, <laughs> according to everybody, but that's not always the case. But you know what I'm saying? That, no. You know, because Ernie, yeah. Davis, Ernie Davis counted on the uninformed voters a lot, too. You know, and, and, you know, before now, he didn't have the social media and he didn't have the News 12 and Files and stuff when he first came in, you know, or Black Westchester or whoever. So, yeah. You know, um, ABC, NBC, and CBS media, yeah. wasn't coming to Mount Vernon on a daily basis. So basically, whatever he said was whatever he said. Like, who's not going to believe the him? King of the Hill. Right. 
<clears throat> but when you started having all these local media outlets being able to check you often, that's when that's when he lost to, to Clinton. Like that first, you know, News 12 was starting to, to come into his own and files were starting to come in right after that. So, you know, and then we came after that. So, you know, mm -hmm. yeah. And the rest is history. Yes, 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 yes. So, um, anything, so right now, we you ask the question I always ask later, but, <coughs> and you mentioned one of the things, so you don't have a website right right as of right I now. I do have a website. Oh, you do have a website. NicoleForYonkers.com, and I want to Is it Nicole 4FOR F -O -R or F -O -R, the number 4? F-O-R, N-I-C-O-L-E. Okay. F-O-R, Yonkers, Y-O-N-K-E-R-S.com, and my daughter made the website. Okay. Hey. All right. Shout out to your daughter. Okay. Do you have any social media? Anything? People are listening to you, and they uh, want to, they want to contact you. For those who want to contact you, they like, oh, I, I want to hear they more. Can, they can go to my website and email me on my website. Okay. Right. Okay. And she's in the community. <coughs> she's out um, there. Any campaign office yet or anything like that? No. no? Campaign. AJ, we're working. Okay, okay. Working any any stuff. fundraisers we can announce? Or? I just had one yesterday. Okay, uh, okay. At, at the home of one of the uh, Mount Vernon former board of school board trustees. Uh, former. Yes, Elias Goodsight. Oh, okay. Yeah, I just wife. saw him. Yes. I just saw him at the um, the the unveiling of the park on Graham yeah. School. We so did. That, the, yeah. So that was very nice of he and his wife to host something for me. Um, I Shout out to Elias Goodsight. Yes, and one of my, uh, I had one in May in Harlem, which you guys probably saw. One of my Yale alumni opened her brownstone to me. Okay. One of my sorority sisters is having something at her home in Scarsdale on July 22nd. And then I'm having one in my building this Saturday, 1155 Warburton. We're having breakfast fundraiser so oh, that bacon good. and eggs and oh, that's nice. pancakes like okay. from 9 a.m. to 12 11 55 Warburton and one of our Yonkers teachers is the hostess Robin Goodson okay um, shout out to Floyd Myers uh, he is tuned in um, and one of our resident uh, one of our uh, uh, well I just asked you your information I said AJ get her information I need some info from her in reference to guardianship of a 19 year old who uh -huh. has been deemed in an apartment to take care of himself? Okay. Because that makes sense, you know. Right. They can go to court and file for Article Eighty One paperwork to become okay. the guardian. Okay. Okay. So. Um, she she knew what you were right, talking right, right. about. Yeah, 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 yes. And yeah, shout out to Floyd. Floyd, uh, I don't know if he listens every week, but uh, definitely uh, appreciate I him tuning in. I do want to say something to the person who. Uh, D. Wilson. D. Wilson. Yeah, who inquired about that. Yes. There are some law schools that provide free services. Okay. The Elder Law Clinic at CUNY Law School, uh, as long as you get on the list, okay. you can get free uh, guard. They'll walk you through it, and they'll pretty much do everything for you. And okay. no one should think that you're not getting good services because that student who's doing it, that law student, right. is depending on their grade. Right, right, and right. And they're over... The, the oversight oh, is by a by a professor. So what's so, Cu CUNY? Law she lives in Mount Vernon. Green. So what would be the closest CUNY to her? I don't know if Pace Law School has an elder law clinic, but uh -huh. I know CUNY's in Queens. But okay. to to make the trek beats pick giving a retainer to an attorney. Okay. Okay. We don't have no CUNY's in the Bronx or Manhattan or. White Plains. Uh, there's a no. Pace is in White Plains. Um, no, it's the CUNY Law School. There's only one city law school. Oh, it's law school. Right. Okay, in, okay. In Queens. She said, "Thank you so much." In You're capital welcome, letters. Z. Yes, 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 <laughs> yes, yes. Um, so right now, is there anything I haven't asked you that you want people to know about you? They can donate to okay. my campaign, and okay. I'm not ashamed every to say that counts. because <laughs> say because that. All, even Barack Obama, Bernie, Hillary, all these people ask for $5, $10. It all adds up. Right. And it's to get mail out because you can't have a message if you can't get the message out. Right. So I know the last time I must have knocked on at least 5,000 doors right. in order to get 1,700 signatures. Wow. But I'm, so... It's a lot, and people don't realize that. So God so, willing, so you got all your signatures by yourself, or did you have help? Well, mm -hmm. not gotcha. I, 90% I did by myself, okay. which probably was not a good idea because okay. they challenged self-witness signatures. 
oh, okay. uh, in court and uh, to knock you off the ballot. Right, 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 right. right. So, but Slam. now I have a little more help, but I still am hustling, right, 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 knocking right. on doors myself. But yeah. I have a little, a little help now. Okay. When is the petition process over? Petition started Tuesday, June sixth, and it's over July second. So you only have a few, a short period of July time 2nd, to collect the okay. signatures, yeah. right? But and I am having so a, that's two weeks from today. Right? I'm having a yeah. free barbecue in Yonkers on the corner of Palisade and Ashburton. I forget his address, but David mm. Ingram, who is the vice president of Yonkers NAACP, which I also serve on the board of Yonkers NAACP <laughs> okay, okay. as their legal redress chair, okay. uh, he's having a free barbecue <coughs> for the community for me. Now, changing the subject a little yes. bit, um, the NAACP. <laughs> um, um, I don't always see, now there's, in Westchester County, White Plains Greenberg, right? They're active. I've seen them active. They're out there. They're whatever. They they're active. I've I've heard Yonkers more a little bit. I think Peak Skill is revamping theirs, and they're really becoming more. Outside of that, um, like I didn't even know there was a Malvern in one for a while. Um, you know, when I first came back to town, like I actually was inquiring, how do you start one, and found out we had one. <laughs> like seriously, seriously, I didn't know. Uh, when I came back to town in 2014, that, there was on, one in my Vernon. Um, 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 Mount Vernon. Uh, Miss Little, uh, Maddie Little, and they have their meetings at the Dole Center, and I don't know when. Um, um, that's a shame. I don't know when. And I don't have Brenda on today. Brenda usually puts everything into the comment section for me. Please, she's she's please. probably with the family, chilling with the family. It was the first Monday. Um, it, it could be something like that, and I, I will find out and let everybody know, but I, I don't know. But but my point is, though, with things going on right now, we're, we're back in that point where we need our organizations. We need those radical people. We need those people that are stepping up for whatever that, you know, pushing them. And I don't always feel like the NAACP is doing it the way they used to do it. You know what I'm saying? Like, like when Karen just, Edmondson had it in Yonkers. Comfortable. I mean, she yeah, huh? rocked it. Right, right. Karen, right. she rocked it. Right, right, I think, right. I think people just got comfortable. You know, they, they got at that time what they was asking for. Right, right. Um, and then it just fell back. Right, you know? right. And um, society changed completely. Right. You know? So um, now they just, and there's no diversity in these boards. It's, it, I, I feel like. Again, the, the and some of them, there's like some ageism. older people. There's some older you know? people there that don't want right, to let right. go. It's ageism. It's like we, you know, we're not and they're not inviting them. personal me. thing anymore or, in, you know, it's, intergenerational work, you know. It, it kind of mirrors what's going on on the national level right. with what happened with uh, Tom Perez and Keith Ellison. Okay. Right. So it, it's right. very ahead. similar. So the smaller groups are like a microcosm of it. Yeah. And. There are people who have been there 20, 30 years, and they are not broadening their base or so, energizing their base to bring in new people. And, and, and that was the other thing. Like, for young people who heard about the NAACP and heard about what it used to be, now they're coming of age. What, what is there to to drive me to join? Like, you know, what is right, the, right. For the what, what are they doing to, 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 to get me, you know, to get these young people to come, you know. <laughs> Same thing involved. the Democratic Party is doing. Nada. Oh wow! Okay, so um, and I, I do say that a lot. One, one, you know, one, one of one of one of one of one of one of the things that was a good selling the point for Rich, for Richard Thomas was that he actually his team, not him particularly, his team reached out to that eighteen to twenty five that had never voted before. Mm -hmm. yeah. Um, I personally signed like. Like 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 over 115 people in that demographic. Myself, um, several that were felons that didn't know that they could vote. Right, mm -hmm. right. You know what I'm saying? And I, and I want to say that again. I want to say that. I say that as often as it's possible. Enough. If in the state of New York, if you are a felon and you are and you are not on parole anymore and you're not on probation, you can vote. Doesn't matter. If you have a as, so long, good as long to know. as long as your as long as your probation. And your parole is done. You can vote. Your rights kick back to you. You have to register again, but you can vote. If you are, if you have a misdemeanor, 
even if you're locked up in Valhalla, you can vote. Right. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. So a lot of people, because so, so a lot a of people, if, I would sign. If you have a misdemeanor and you're in Valhalla, you can vote via affidavit. I, I don't know how they do it absentee ballot. I'm not exactly sure because they actually have people go up there with, with things, the, the, oh, with the, the, the cause. Cool. There's an organization that goes up. I don't know much about that. Damon could have spoke to that, I and mean, there's other people who know. And I will I will inquire so we can get that information yeah, out more yeah, towards yeah, the election. You know. But I do know that you can vote, and 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 it's just like I went to sign a lot of people, and they be like, yo, I can't I can't register because I got a felony. I said, you on par- parole? They were like, nah. Man. I said, you on probation? Nah, I've been good for like the last couple of years. I said, so you, your rights kick back to you. You just have to the register day, now. And and and, are, and yeah. again, that uninformedness, most people don't know that. So they don't tell nobody that because that's a whole group of people. And then, you know, one of the things that I att- att- attracted the young people when we were working with Rich's campaign, I was like, yo, all the things y'all complain about, y'all don't have no services, y'all don't have right, this, y'all don't right. have this, you know. And I was like, yo, involved, and I was right. like, but y'all don't vote, though. And they're never going to pay attention to y'all if y'all don't vote. And I said, as long as y'all don't vote, y'all ain't never going to have nothing. You know, right, you know what I'm saying? Because right, they're not even working. They're working for the same They're working for the same group of people right. that vote all the time. And that's all they control, concern themselves with. And if you're not in that, then you're not, you know. So, 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 if I were a candidate and I decided to send a voter registration form plus a palm card to every inmate in Valhalla, would that be allowed? That would be a Damon question or someone who knows. Great question. Who's Maybe more. if someone's listening, they could uh, comment or share with someone who does know the answer or can get the answer right now. Um, I mean, I I'm tricky definite... enough to do something like that no, because it, they have right. every right to it's vote. And want, right. Yeah, but and, I think that there are there, there are groups that I know. There are groups that I know. There are groups that I believe, and I'm saying I believe there are groups that actually go up that day, and you know the inmates are allowed to come through and they but they need to be and vote. You know what I'm saying? No, right. but you know there are, there are supposed to be groups that actually will register them too if they want to register. Um, the group helps them with the whole process. Right, right, right. I don't know what the group is called. I don't know how involved they are or how effective they are. I will find that out. And yeah, in the coming true. weeks throughout the summer, I will make sure I get that information. And if anybody, like you said, anybody knows about this, please call up, leave a comment, right. um, contact us at blackwestchester at gmail.com. On the, um, on, the, on the stop and shake topic, uh, especially in Mount Vernon real quick. Okay. What time is it? You got, you got, got time. We got a few time minutes um so yeah so stop and shake has become like a social icebreaker specifically for these reasons you know because more of us need to come together and kind of talk to each other cross class just pull your age, mic a little closer too yeah go ahead. cross class age everything you know um to touch on the topic uh, uh the the situation you gave in mount vernon um i remember throwing the stop and shake up there and um i want to give a big shout out to detective clark and um and um carpenter sergeant carpenter these two officers go above and beyond. I mean, personally and in their job. Uh, and I was sitting out there with Detective Clark, and we stopping and shaking, and he's pulling kids, explaining to them the importance of it. And he's like, yo, listen, if you're not going to stop and shake me, go stop and shake the business owner. Stop and shake your hood, you know. Right, right, right. And, you know, getting them, the, uh, getting them to understand the importance uh, of... I want to I want to ask you a question while you're on that. Um, what I had heard um, that disturbed me was y'all was set up at a corner or whatever, y'all were doing yeah. a stop and shake. And the department didn't know, and you, you know, you got the kids coming out of school, so they're coming by. But a block or two before they got to you, right. there was a cop, like, cursing <laughs> at the kids or something. Right. Like, that did not know that there was a stop and shake, oh that, 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 the, that the officers were doing that. So, so when they, by the time they got to you, they was like, man, I ain't shaking nothing. No, like, oh, it, was, it was true. It's so true. So this is, this is how, this is what, and this is what gets me upset with, like, the organization of the politics. When politics gets involved, it washes certain initiatives out that are, are created to fight against that. So in, in Mount Vernon, particularly, I need the people's help because the structure out there is, uh, they're, they're still figuring it out themselves, right? So I had spoken to the commissioner at the time. He's retired since. But the commissioner at the time, I had sent him the information needed. He was supposed to send it out to all his uh, departments and sergeants. Everyone's supposed to know. To, hey, the, look, to the whole, the, the, to the the whole the department. department. Hey, yeah. look, this day we will be doing a stop and shake station. We have a guest, Hector Santiago, coming from another town, coming over to do this. 
Um, and you know, I thought it was out there. I was doing my stop and shake station with Detective Clark, and um, I, I look down the block and I see this cop cursing the kids out, like, "Yo, get the fuck out of here!" I mean, bugging, right? So I walk up to him and I'm like, "Yo, sir, is there a problem?" Right? And he didn't even know what the stop and shake was at the moment or nothing. You know, it was it was just the stop and shake was launched in, in, in Mount Vernon by Richard Thomas. He said we were going to launch the initiative. We launched it. Um, and then I started working closely with uh, Clark and everything. But I don't know what happened after that. That it just, no one really knew about it, you know. Um, so I spoke to the cop. And he didn't know I was the creator of the Stop and Shake. He didn't know what the Stop and Shake was. So he told me. He was like, oh, yo, you too. Get out of here. Start moving, right? So I was like, excuse me? And me and him got into a little altercation. And I said, you know what? Listen. I said, we're in the other side of the block trying to build relationships. And you're scaring them away. You know, because they, would, they wouldn't even, they wanted to walk around us. They didn't even want to stop the shit. Because from what Clark's I heard, even, even Detective Clark was upset with that He was officer. upset, yeah. So I brought the guy over, and, and Clark is trying to explain to him, like, yo, what are you doing? Relax. You know, we're trying to build these relationships. And the guy's like, oh, no, but, you know, they told me to come clear this out. So there was just a, you know, Clark. But you could clear it out without cursing Right, right. So Clark, Clark, you know, Clark handled the situation, explained to him that he was out of line, and, and, and pulled him aside, and. You know, we, we got down to it. They've apo they apologized about the situation, and um, but it was just so unfortunate because if the uh, the whole police department knew what was going on, then he could have been in the other side doing what he was told. Because you know, at that time, all the kids gather up in front of the store, so he is kind of supposed to have the move. That's right. But he could have been on the other side, say, "Hey guys, keep moving down, keep moving down." They're giving out free chips and sodas down the right, block. Right, 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 you right. You know, right, and we would have right. been over there stopping and shaking. Right, 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 right. It could have been a whole different scenario, but right. because of the miscommunication it, it, within the department, um, and, and that's the biggest problem in any department. It's a miscommunication. That you can't expect a community. Um, to, to, to come together and, and respect police officers when res police officers aren't even respecting each other, you know? And um, mm. so, right. through, so through that situation, I kind of stepped back and said, listen, I can't do no more stop and shake stations in Mount Vernon and put anybody's <laughs> life in jeopardy. I, I would have I felt so guilty if a kid would have came out his face because this officer was coming out his face right, and right. a situation would have happened there, you know right, what I right, mean? Right, right, right. So, um, so... Fast forward, I now only work with Detective Clark and Carpenter who, who have done everything they can to organize it right. You know, they've even given me a schedule for the roll call. They're going to have me coming and speaking to the You the, popped the us people. off in Yonka as well. We've been yeah, successful. Yeah. Have, are you or any other municipalities in Westchester? Um, right <laughs> now, so I, Mount Vernon, Yonkers. Um, I'm in the talks with Peaskill, Noodle. He's uh, right, right, running. Right, right. Great dude. Um, really really genuine dude he's, he's gonna be he's one of future guests uh, he's running oh, for nice, nice. running Great for um, guy. I've, I've met him running for before. mayor and, yeah 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 and, 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 i met him once before amazing guy really down to earth he gets it you know and i think that that's the biggest thing in, in, in any politics or any governmental office we need people who are uh who can agree to disagree you know <coughs> and, and um and get it you know can identify with certain there's so much issues out there when it comes to classism and, and, and um, ageism is the biggest issue right now you know but besides race we're dealing with ageism like when we go back to the NAACP that's a that's an organization that predominantly is run by I want to say seniors almost you know um, to, well, well to me they're seniors well I mean start, young, but, it didn't start um, in 2015 but one of the things and I'm writing a book on the political scene, especially in Mount Vernon, but in Westchester, has been a big generational shift. You right, know, right. even from the the Black Lives Matter you people taking no power, people the, the Black Lives Matter people taking the, taking power from the Al Sharptons. Like right, right, y'all don't represent right, us no more. Right. We represent us. Right, you know what I'm saying? Right. And it's like the younger politicians like not Can waiting not their turn. You know what I'm saying? You see. It doesn't all work out, but I mean, you're seeing a generational shift across the country, and I'm, mm -hmm. I'm, I'm writing about that um, in Mount Vernon. You know, that's the, the, awesome, yeah. and, I, and, and oh. definitely got to put that out. When you talk about waiting their turn, um, they say that to people who are younger. Right, 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 but right, right. When it suits them. Right, 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 right. right. Well, see, they, I, they're I, allowed to primary okay, what, other people. Where I wasn't Perfect trying to, where, where I wasn't new county exec race. Right. But if it was some other people, right. the same uh, 
fervor for primary would not be there because it only applies, that rule only applies to, to them. Right. Well, I, I mean, I was specifically speaking about something that I didn't want to mention, but <laughs> so, so Richard Thomas was told the way this turned. Mr. And Thomas so, came in as the youngest, he was the youngest city councilman in the history of Mount Vernon. I that, right? and, and, it, and that was his whole thing. And I'm sure new people like me have been told to wait right, their right. turn. But, but now, now that he won uh, a historical race, you know, a lot of people like, see, I told you he wasn't ready. You know what I'm saying? So a lot of people are with the whole, right. that's why I said sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't work. Right. And you know your legacy, your legacy, your legacy, that. your legacy ends up coming out right. after you're out of office. You know how, how much you want. So, you know, even though you had a rocky start, I mean, by some way he could turn it around and, you know, be be great. You know what I'm saying? Right. But but as of now, a lot of people who were the waiter turners, you know, the the Davis supporters right. are saying, see, see, this is what we were talking about. Every time you do something wrong, like it's he, you know what I'm saying? Sword. Like so, right, right. so. And for some people, he's messed it up throughout the county with the whole, it's time for change, because that's all he was talking about, is change. <laughs> and they're like, that ain't the change we were talking about. You know what I'm saying? So, I mean, we, we definitely so, need to like inspire the youth, man, and give the youth a voice. There needs to be more youth on certain boards, um, even high schools. Get more high schools involved. Get kids from um, transitionals. There's, there's people in the community that they get one felon and they think their whole life is over. You know what I'm saying? It's just a start. You know, my transition started four or five years ago only. You know, and I, big shout out to my daughters, Amari and Paisley. Happy they Father's Day. Happy, thank Happy you, Father's thank Day. You, thank you. Okay. I just spent um, all day with them. We had a nice little picnic down the, um, at the Yonkers Pier. Um, but, you know, every day is Father's Day for me. I love my kids. But, right. you know, um, I, we definitely need more transitionals. We need to give uh, support. Listen, forget politics. This is to all the people in the community. Support each other. No matter what you're doing, support each other. If you're doing an open mic, you're selling a book, selling T-shirts, support. Because there's so much other things. This young person, like person like me, I, I didn't know what to do. It was through volunteering, through communities that I learned the ropes and I learned how to, you know, um, who's who and what's what you know but it was people that like lorraine you know lorraine uh um lucy uh there's so many people who have sat down with me and given me that opportunity to speak or or, or allowed me to vent mm -hmm. and, and not take nothing from it and say hey okay get that out your chest now let me just put the puzzle pieces together mm -hmm. you know um nicole i've sat down with i know her personally um Christopher Johnson's another person that you know on a personal level I've sat with these people and and they're real it's as real as it gets you know they, mm -hmm. they're not gonna beat around the bush they're gonna tell you what it is um, but they'll help you find a solution after that you know what I mean and um, that's what we need more in the community we need to support each other and that's why I started the stop and shake you know if you're not gonna stop and shake a cop I get it get your money don't stop and shake a cop but stop and shake the people calling them on you because they're calling them on you right, they right, can't right. speak to you. Right, right, if they right. can speak to you, then they wouldn't be calling the cops. Right, right, so right. use the stop and shake as an icebreaker for that interpersonal communication, mm. you know? Well, I would, I would say, I just want to say this for those, and I've said this often, for those who say that the youth is out of control, um, is it really the youth failing us or is it us failing the youth? And I say that there was a lot of people my age now that when I was that, young knucklehead got at me and I really wasn't trying to hear him. I'm like yeah go away from me old man you know it wasn't really but I heard everything that they said right. you know what I'm saying I mean I had my father in my life but there was people outside of my father the 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 um I always say the security guard the security guard who when I <laughs> cut school I cut school like four or five days in a row right. and he rode his bike to my house at seven o'clock at night and gave me the respect to ask me to come outside the house and then say, Joe, basically you effing up, such and such and such. You need to get back in school, right, blah, 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 blah. And he was like, our next conversation will include your father. You, you understand what I'm saying? Right. But, he, but he treated me like I, mean, I was in school the next day. You, you understand what I'm saying? Right, you know, so, the people so, that go above so, and beyond. Right, so, right, you know, right. I've had people. And then, you know, you had other couple of people that, you know, maybe been down on their luck, but been through life. Had a lot of, and you see them in the park and you'd be like, yeah, okay, leave me alone. But you heard what they said. Right. I, if it wasn't for all of them, I it would be dead. I would be right. dead or in jail now. No, I wouldn't fact. be this Likewise. cat that you Absolutely. see right now. Absolutely. And a lot of people who knew me, who still know me, you'd be like, "Oh, who's this guy talking all this stuff now?" Like, yeah. you know what I'm saying? Like, a lot of people ain't used to this. Right. You know what I mean? It's so real. it's real. Like I tell everybody, right? It takes a village to raise a child, right? But it takes a bunch of loving relationships to create a village, and right. we've lost touch of that. 
You know, everybody well, keeps saying. Well, I mean, when I was younger, I knew everybody on my block. Right, right. And even when I decided to do dirt on the other side of town, somehow my mother knew before I got home. Right. You understand right. what I'm saying? I like now, up, but now, but said, now is there's now me. most people don't <laughs> yeah, yeah. most I people don't know bird. everybody on their block or they're even their side of the block. Right. They don't even know people in the same building. Right. Right. Right, right. Right. So it's Absolutely. just like you know we don't have we lost. That. Absolutely. People don't talk to each other. A lot block, of the kids are texting. They're watching YouTube all day long. They're totally disconnected from right. for, for fostering relationships. Right. So. Well, well, we, but you still have to work on that, though. Right. I mean, right. because there's a way to utilize that. You mm -hmm. know what I'm saying? And it's just, you know, you have to be able to understand I technology. I professor YouTube, and it was using... You said professor YouTube. Professor that, YouTube, that is, right. That is, anytime I have to... Yo, you. How do you get that screw off the thing? That's yeah, rusted. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You, 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 you right. too. Like Listen, the rusted, the I, rusted. You can build a car. Right. I, I, I used to Google and, and YouTube everything someone told me. Oh, I remember like someone said, "Oh, I, well, long ago, Hector, you gotta wear a tie if you want people to listen to you." And I said, "What?" I went to the thrift store, bought a tie for two dollars, and went home on YouTube and learned how to tie seven different knots. On YouTube, oh, you, you, you know what I mean? You got me beat because I, <laughs> I got no, one or two knots. It's getting the knowledge and I'm gonna tell out you, there. What, and I'm what gonna tell people you, should be looking up. What they they be stay knotted. I just oh, widen them up a little bit <laughs> <laughs> so I can throw more they real quick. Knotted, right? <laughs> yeah, so, I got a few of those. I got a few yeah, of those. Yeah. But right, man, it's all about. I have, listen, I, I, I'm nothing without my community. My community is what raised me. They, you know, they brought me to where I'm at. Um, and, and it's about that, man. It's really about. It's a lot of times it's not what you know, it's who you know. And the more people you know out there, the more relationships you build, um, the more knowledge you'll get, and the further you'll get in life. You know. Let me let me let me change the thing. You uh, you know her, and you know what office she's running for. You have any questions to ask? No, I know her. But I mean, ask. But still, you know, might be you might be able to ask something that I can't think of to ask though. Uh, I. Uh... Uh, it's hard to ask questions it, to people that you know because you know the right, answers right, already. Because, you, no, you already. Know you already, so know like, uh, already know. I feel like. But we got to teach the, you know, bring the word out to right, other people that right. don't know. I know all the candidates, and that's what puts me in a tight situation, yeah, yeah, yeah. right? Because no, I know all of them. No, no, right. I know all of them. I think they're all great individuals. Uh, again, it goes back into um, healthy, right? <laughs> right. <laughs> Check. No Let's put that up there, you know, um, and um, I just feel like um, she's healthy enough to move and groove and get out there. Smart. She She's smart. She's got it. Um, if there's any doubt, I don't have a doubt in my mind that she cannot run that seat successfully. You know, I, I think she can I, definitely. I do want to say something. If anybody has any question or doubt with regard to my resilience and mm. my grit, right. um, they shouldn't. I'm not going to get into a whole bunch of stuff. I bet you she's done, oh, done, done triathlons too. I <laughs> bet you. Right. I'm not going to get into the minutia of that on this show. But it's you have to be made of steel to run in Yonkers. Right. Yonkers is not easy. Mm -hmm. right. And those people are not easy. Yonkers make And after people. I lost that first race, there are many people who I would go to events. I show, still show up at every event. Like I see you. I, see I show see up you. at every event, even I after I lost. My ward leaders didn't even speak, still don't speak to me, and it's two years later. Wow. But I still go, and I'm cordial. I speak to everybody. I smile. I shake their hand. Um, right. So whatever shade they try to throw at me or the comments they make, it has no impact on my hustle because I continue to push forward and I'm smarter now. And God willing, I just need a little bit more this time to push me over the edge to mm. win. That's what's up. That's what's up. Yeah. You, you um, you mentioned Janice, and y'all knowing each other. You you have that in common with her. Right. She, oh, yeah. um, she and and she increased her hustle after that because I I told you she joined Junior League of Bronxville with me, which mm -hmm. is a very diverse group, a different group of of women who are serving the community. Mm. What now? Um, they ask more mayors and presidents and stuff. What things in your first year would you like to get Nicole. changed? Huh? Oh, no, I'm sorry. I'm on my live and people are asking me questions. Oh, okay, <laughs> okay. Oh, you got you. So, um, you know, oh, okay. I'm double lining. I'm double lining. Oh, if, right you, if someone is asking a question, did you can Tell ask. Yo, check. I'm actually going to share. Hold on. Let me share and go comment on this. Okay. Um, what would you like to do? Say you, you know, if if and when you win, 
Um, in your first year, what would you like to accomplish? <laughs> well, I definitely think daycare subsidies is a big issue. Yes. Uh, I have many right. friends who work in social services right now, particularly services that are ch regard children and families, that service children and families. And many of the moms, even the people in the employment agencies, are saying that it's difficult for them to go to work, challenging. Mm -hmm. because they don't have the subsidy vouchers to pay for daycare. So they shouldn't have to make a choice mm -hmm. between going to work and leaving their child in safe daycare services. Okay. So that would be a priority for me. Uh, if, if possible, I would definitely like to pursue the local jobs for local people. Mm -hmm. Any county contracts that involve Yonkers should have Yonkers unions and workers on... Uh, participating in those contracts, getting those contracts. Okay. Okay, okay. Now, you speak a lot, um, and I've seen you out and about, and you speak a lot about daycare and a lot of, that's been something that, I, I, I guess it's safe to say you're very passionate about the whole. Well, I've uh, worked with children and families, yeah. Okay. Daycare is definitely an issue, and I have it's a daughter. A I want to how, how, how old is she? How old she well, she's Thank 17, but I do remember that being an issue. <laughs> oh, okay, okay. Right. So as a, sing, <laughs> as a single mom, it, it was an issue. I'll be Elizabeth to you. So Greystone oh. definitely held it down with daycare. I appreciate y'all. <laughs> oh, okay. Yeah, no, daycare is a super issue, man. I'm telling you, even me, it was it was so hard to for for um, either one of us to, like, get a job or just stay active having the brand new baby and... Um, I mean, it's it's you hard. Pay for daycare, right? And and daycare is three hundred dollars a week, man. Yeah. It's ridiculous. Three hundred dollars a week. That's rent. That's how much I gotta stop paying for my grandson. Yeah, it's 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 ridiculous. A lot of parents out here, you know, they're like, how am I gonna get to? Especially for a part time. You God forbid they want to get a small part time or something. How are they gonna pay three hundred dollars a week and have a part time? Plus, you gotta it, get the kid to daycare. Right. Huh. I mean, yeah. And half of us don't have cars, so it's like bus fare, cars. Um, you know, ridiculous. So definitely, we definitely need help with daycare. Big time. Um, one of the one of the um, we brought this up with the the, the county exec um candidates um. Mm -hmm. mm. Um, and we had a we had a young lady from Yonkers. She's she's homeless. She's a homeless okay. advocate, Laura Laura Case. Right. Um, oh, she yes. she writes a lot for us. She's right. she's. Doing Laura, the I know Laura. Well, Laura's I, awesome. She I has mean, another column coming out. And um, matter of fact, last time she was on the show, and she couldn't get no she couldn't get nowhere. I called Chris on the air, and made the two talk. <laughs> <laughs> I put him on the spot. Matter of fact, yes. no, I hit him on, on instant message like, Yo, can you call right now? <laughs> and basically put him on the air. And, you know what I'm saying, and, yeah, and, and, Laura, and then Laura and it was like, stuff, it was like, um, now you know if we hear Ugh. if she calls us back in a month or so, we say you ain't get with her. You know? <laughs> right, <laughs> right, right. But so, AJ, so, but, you bring up a good point about homelessness. Um, although it may not be an issue for people who live on in the condos and the co-ops right, 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 in right, Yonkers, right. Um, it's still an issue, and it should be right. addressed with any responsible Amen. city planner should make sure well, that you have to have homeless shelters. I know there's a big controversy, but one of the shelters was closed down in Yonkers. Right, and that's what and she was here about. And the right, sharing right. community is still trying to stay afloat. Right. And, uh, because I know their, 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 their kitchen was is, has been uh, And in cut. one of them, you couldn't take a shower in or something like right, that. Or something. Right, yeah. right, right. But, so, but what, 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 what I've learned from her, what I was going to say, I did not know this, even in my walking around, um, there's a whole new group, a whole new generation of working homeless. Mm -hmm. Yeah, people who have nine to fives I, and their kids I go first, to school, but they don't, the they don't, they don't, they don't have a YMCA. place to live. They don't have a place to live. But and, and a lot right. of it is precipitated yeah. also by mental illness. There are the working homeless, mm -hmm. but there are people who are mentally ill, and that's precipitated their homelessness because they can't, they don't, they're not able to continue their activities of daily living, right. their functioning. And as you know, the county has cut a lot of the mental health services. Even, just on a general level, hospitals, the stay is getting shorter and shorter. Right. They don't even right. wait for you to be psychiatrically stable before they throw you out right. on I the think street. It's like 12 hours now so that like would that. be a concern of mine as well in terms of mental health services and homeless issues, which are under the umbrella of a county legislator. Right, and that's, and that's what I want to bring about, like, the two words that, you know, Westchester is one of the top ten wealthiest counties in mm -hmm. the country. 
Um, and Obama's first administration, two thirds of them lived, were from Westchester. Right. Um, three of the four major league commissioners live in Westchester. Um, and we go on and on and on right, about right. you know who's in Westchester. I mean, the FBI and, director and, and, was from Yonkers. Right, and and so so, with all that being said, you know, homelessness and poverty are two words that they act like don't exist. Right, it goes back to classism. And, 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 then, and, then, and, then, and then Astorino has passed a zero budget the last, what, three, four years or whatever it is he's promised. He, but you can't do a zero budget when everything goes up every year. So if you do a zero budget, you then have to cut. Services. And, uh, you know, you end up losing the probation office in Mount Vernon. You know what I'm saying? And, right. you know, services sharing all of... Yeah. You're right. sharing community. And, um... You know, what do you, you know, feel about all that? That's what I want to get you, because you'll be up there to argue for that if that's on your mind, you know. Well, definitely I would be advocating for that because um, Yonkers do need that. The, I have to look at the health of the overall community. Not You were talking about uh, people don't pay attention to the people who don't vote. Mm -hmm. That uh, politicians focus on people who are their voting constituents. Mm -hmm. uh, downtown Yonkers, I don't know if you know, their voting for the last election was only 10% of the people came out to vote. Mm -hmm. Right, right, right. But those are the most vulnerable of our population in District 1. Uh, so I would still advocate for them to make sure that the for the health of the whole district, District 16. And homelessness plagues District 1 more than the other districts because right. we have the train station down there. And a lot of homeless people sleep in front of the train station. It's a safe haven for them. And it's warm in the winter. So I would be advocating for that, not well, they just fighting. Made a law. It's illegal to sleep in it those benches now. It is illegal now. now. Right. It so is. But I would be advocating for that to make sure. And the other thing is the other uh, municipalities, they have homeless shelters, but they're not utilizing them. I know you can't force them to do, but Yonkers and Mount Vernon are overburdened right now. Well, not with only the that, they're, 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 they're dumping they grounds. They're, they're, they're dumping, dumping grounds. grounds. They right. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. One in Chappaqua Everyone's doesn't want this stuff up there, so they dump it down. You know right. what I'm saying? You know, right. all those big communities. go to, they say go to Yonkers. They send them down to Yonkers. There used we to be a shuttle that they used everywhere. to come at nighttime and pick up the homeless and take them. Where would they take them? Out of Yonkers. Still. They take them they to, take them to Peace shelter Kill. White Plains, Peace Kill. Right. The White Plains shelter got they closed. They stopped that. Right. So. so there are other municipalities that I want to give a shout out to Braveheart. Braveheart oh, yeah. is an nice organization group. that deals with um, teens and young adults who like uh, coming out of foster coming care. Coming out of foster care and... and there's a whole underline of homelessness of, of kids who just have a lot of friends and they're called couch surfers where yeah. um, they, you know, they sleep at their friends' couches. When I first started the Stop a Shake, I was living in the YMCA. I was homeless myself. Um, a few months later, I lost everything in a fire and I was completely homeless. And um, I, I was just resilient because Yonkers makes strong people and I had a, lot, a big support team. But I remember being homeless, running to my friend's house, showering up, putting on my suit, and going to a board meeting. You know, but I, I'm glad I bounced out that. But Braveheart is definitely an organization in Yonkers that um, has been tackling that on head on, um, and and it's run by people who have been in the system, are in the system, or are trying to come out of it. You know, mm -hmm. so there's a lot of identifiable pieces in that organization. So I, I want to give them a big shout out. And um, check them out. Go Google them. Find them in Yonkers, Bravehearts. Um, Jessica's doing her thing. Shout out to her. And um, yeah, so I want to um, shout out Mike Cater, who's listening. Hey, uh, Mike. Oh, Mike. Okay. And and and, and the other, yeah. Why haven't you called? And, and the other twenty-two people that are listening from Hector's live. Um, I don't know who all y'all are, but um, oh, welcome we to love, the, baby. Well, welcome, yeah, we well, love, well, baby. welcome, welcome yeah. to the People Before Politics show. If you've never seen us before. And, um, you know, and wrapping up the show, coming close to the end, I want to make sure I just give you another opportunity, just anything I didn't ask you, anything you want to get out. What do people need to know about you? Who are you? Anything I didn't ask you, you know. So I just want to reiterate that I'm more, inca more than capable mm -hmm. uh, for this position as county legislator. As Gail said that um, she said I'm heads above the rest, and I try to be mm -hmm. modest, Aww. but that was nice of her to say because um, – I do have a master's in social work. I do have a law degree. I have uh, been very much involved in, co in the community. I've been on several 
uh, organizations with Gail involved in seven, uh, Aquahung Women's Democratic Club, Westchester Black Women's Holy Political Lord. Caucus, uh, NAACP. I'm a member of Alpha Kappa Alpha for 25 years. Uh, various organizations that uh, express my diversity and that I'm willing to reach across the aisle unlike my opponents and uh, meet people where they are for the health of the community to make sure that all the voices are heard. Many different voices, but Yonkers has to move forward with an, a fresh voice, an independent voice, one that's resilient and determined, and I am that person. And you can donate at NicoleForYonkers.com. <laughs> that is too cute. Shout out to her daughter. Shout out to her daughter, you know, doing her thing with the and website. And my daughter, Naomi, is right now on her class trip to Cuba. So she'll oh. be back. Yeah, she'll be back on Wednesday. She's probably okay, congratulations. Out. Congratulations. Thank you. That's what's up. Yeah. So, um, again, um, happy and Father's Day. Thank you to everybody who's listening. We appreciate you being informed right, about the right. issues. Uh, that's what we need, a more Welcome, informed I electorate. Love you, and you know what? And I want to say, you know, while we have a lot of people that listen, and there's some people that end up listening to it afterwards, you know, mm -hmm. I, I encourage, I encourage, and you know, some shows we have more of it than not, um, listeners to participate. Like, that's why right. this forum right. is for whether it's typing the question in and we just read it for you or you actually calling in, this is your opportunity to learn. You know what I'm saying, and 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 have, and, your, and, voice and, and, and have your voice heard, you the and and maybe in an opportunity where you yeah, you don't um you don't know. So you know um the number is seven one eight seven zero five four nine five nine, or um you know you can you can uh, like I said wherever we're live, you can just type it in, type it in there, and um you know don't, no question is is a stupid question. The only my well, mother used to always say the only asked. stupid questions are the ones you don't ask. So, oh, you know, you know, so and I got to give it to you, That's AJ, for giving people who don't Everybody necessarily have the, the resources and the money a mm -hmm. platform to spread their message. Mm -hmm. So thank you so much. Well, well thank you. We've, we've grown. We're coming in our third year, three year anniversary of the show in August, three year anniversary of Black West Chess in July. Um, we're going print in August. Mm -hmm. And um, I mean, we, we came from having these conversations to having a Senate debate from the last election for a Ruth Hassel Thompson seat. All, oh. all of them were here, all five candidates. Like we literally had it out wow. debate, you know, and then oh. that was our first one. That was like I've never hosted a debate. <laughs> I've never put a debate together. I was like, I was nervous for like a month before <laughs> to like. So were you timing them and cutting them off? Yeah, you know what the time. Their one thing, minute rebuttal. We had Bren, right, right, we had right. Brenda here with the timer. Huh? You know what I'm saying? Oh, and, it was, you know, and when they okay. wasn't paying attention, she was like, I said one minute. Like, she was like, yeah, she, she was, um, and then, you know, there was a little more rebuttal than needed to be, but, you oh. know, like, you know what I'm saying? It was just, you know, and then one person got the rebut, this one didn't rebut, and oh. I was like, you know, so we, we, uh, it was a learning experience. It was a very big <laughs> learning experience. I mean, you can still go back and see it. Let me tell it. you, but that is a pressure situation because I'm a moderator for League of Women Voters for the yeah. whole county. Okay. So I have moderated debates with, um, for county legislator, the one that uh, Ben Boykin did against his predecessor. Oh, okay. I've done Senate debates. And to keep the time and to make sure that everybody, you go back and forth. Right. And we have five candidates, candidates. Five candidates. And yeah. people get upset. And we had a two hour them. show. Yeah. yeah. For two hours to keep that up. And I had to, and I had to like, change the order like I would start the questions yeah, this way and then do it this way and then start from the middle like I would just I was just making up rules as I went along <laughs> and, and, and closing argument is the person who starts is different from the person right right who right 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 argument. well I see that enough because I was watching enough debates that you, you know saw, what I'm saying that I yeah. saw that yeah 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 so I, I was I paid attention but we end up asking questions that the other ones wouldn't. And then, you know, I had other mm -hmm. people asking, right. like, like you know, the homeless advocate asking homeless questions. We had Juanita Lewis with, um, with Community Voices Heard asking questions about poverty. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like, what is poverty to you? And what what will you do? Blah, blah, blah. And speaking, questions of, speaking of poverty, just I want to say one thing. Yes. I guess the Westchester Women's Agenda just put out a report a couple months ago. Mm. And they were saying that the biggest uh, cause of poverty for women, particularly, mm -hmm. is rental like lack of home ownership in Westchester mm. County and how hard it is to reach home ownership yeah, because sure. of how expensive the homes are the condos the co-ops so I just wanted to bring that up that it, it's a pervasive issue in Yonkers with the rise in all the luxury rentals they call them now 
is making poverty even more of an issue in Yonkers. In Mount Vernon, I've had people that actually came because they got a foreclosed house for next to nothing, couldn't afford to move it because of the taxes. Mm -hmm. It's crazy, like, because someone said this to me, and I had, you know, I got to look everything up. They said, Mount Vernon pays the most taxes in the country. No. I was like, there's no way. Listen, listen, listen. So Google, go do this right That's now. Wait, 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 wait. Deal. No, 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 no. Go do this right now. Google um, highest paying county, highest tax paying counties. Um, Westchester, wait, wait, no. There. Westchester is number one. Yeah, yeah, of course. No, no. Highest paying City. cities in Westchester. Mount Vernon is number one. It doesn't go by, but but see, this is why it doesn't. Go, it goes by the property value is lower, and the taxes are higher. So it's the percentage to. You, you understand what I'm saying? Oh, like let's just say, like like just say, like to say, um, an example. Someone brought a house for seven hundred thousand, say twelve years ago. That you know, and then they put a couple of hundred dollars into hundred hundred thousand into it. And Pella Manor, that house is worth 1.5 at least. Mm -hmm. Now that property value has dropped, that house is worth basically barely four now. But they're still paying 22,000 on that four. So it's, it's the amount that they're paying on the property value. So when you do it that way, Mount Vernon is the highest paying. Right, right, you know, right. not, now, and Pella Manor, and Pella Manor, yes, you're paying more in money. But your house is worth so much more. Right, you know what I'm saying? Right. So no, no, the percentage, because right, right. I, because I was like, yo, that's no way in hell. <laughs> but that's what it is. Because I did this, like I, I Google highest paying counties in the country. What's the t out of the top ten? Most of them are New York. Right. Not right. Westchester, Nassau, the Matt, right. Westchester, Nassau and Count, Nassau and Suffolk and Long Island. Um, I don't know if Rockland or one pro above Rockland. Um, and the ones that not Mount Vernon, I mean, uh, New York were New Jersey. And so, like, I was like, wow. I'm definitely looking that up tonight. Yeah, you can look that you find that's that out. That's got to be a bugged out. For, that's a crazy formula. But, so that, but it's, that's, how, that's how they rule it, you know, and how much you're paying. So if you're paying 22000 so on, 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 on. set fixed tax Right, if you're paying 22000 no what, what, you're, Right, you're paying. Your be worth no matter what. Right, you're paying, you're paying 22000 on on property that has worth three hundred and fifty thousand, and or as opposed to paying forty thousand on something worth one point four, right. you know what I'm saying right. for the same property. You know what I'm saying? So no way. Yeah. So That's even nuts. so even though people in Scarsdale and maybe Pella Manor pay more money out, right? The right, property right. value of what the, yeah, you right. know what I'm saying is lower. No, no, it goes yeah, up yeah. depending on the tax or the lower. No, no, but I'm taxes. saying the property value is lower in Mount Vernon and the property and what you're paying on that low property value is crazy. Right. You know what I'm saying? So yeah. so a lot of people, where I live on the south side, a lot of people's houses, they couldn't sell their house for what it's worth. Say that. Yeah, nobody would have... They're, they're not, they, their houses, they're some nice houses, but they're not worth what they're, they're upside down. They actually, there are people that owe more money <laughs> than their down. house is worth at this point. Yeah. 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 So well, I want to give a shout out also to, um, I guess the Board of Legislators. Um, I got awarded last Saturday, and they, they proclaimed June 20th, which is this Tuesday, Hector Santiago Day on Westchester. So I'm really excited about that. Oh, so you're going to be on the board? You're going to be on yeah, the yeah, Jumbotron? Yeah, you got to celebrate Tron, that White every Plains, year. Every year. So, so you got to go You got to go. You gotta go to the Jumbotron, and you got to go take you a picture. Every, yeah, you, you have to take a selfie. I'll probably go do that. Yeah, you have yeah. to do that. Yeah, you I, have I, to do that. that, that is I have to post that. That's a blessing. I, I, I have a couple of days from the county. Yeah, Whatever your day is, it's on the county center board. The thing. Yeah, you You have to go that day. And, you know, Whatever the announcers are, maybe it's twenty minutes and before it recycle, or fifteen minutes, whatever. Right. You gotta watch, and it will say that all day oh, that that's day. So cool. oh, and I you have to take another people, people have taken pictures of it. Oh yeah, I, I already yeah. got. I'm ready. Mm -hmm. I got um today for Father's Day. I got a spa for Oasis, so okay. I'm gonna go take a. I'm gonna go take a selfie at the the jumbotron. Then I'm gonna go to the spa. <laughs> okay. I'm gonna enjoy my Hector Santiago day. Okay, you know? okay. So that that I'm definitely excited about that. It's a blessing for my family. You know, oh, I appreciate that a lot. You work hard. You deserve it. Um, um, and we haven't done a full article on it yet, but you know we had Atlantic Star um, in the studio, um, and um, they 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 uh, Greenberg has given them Atlantic Star Way. They have a street named after oh, them. Oh wow, that's um, awesome! Um, I didn't know um, that. Within the last month, um, and for your hip hop heads, um, 
um, Boogie Down Production. K, um, Boogie Down. Scott LaRock has a day. Um, um, Jerome in Kingsbridge is now known as Scott LaRock. DJ really? Scott LaRock Way. Yeah, I yes. saw that. I saw that. I yeah, yeah, yeah. Good. So um, I did that story. I got to do the Atlantic Star story. It's not finished yet. Um, but so shout out to you know, right, right, man. you know, what I'm that's, saying that's the Lewis brothers the, right. of 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 Atlantic Star, and shout out to you know KRS and all the BDP and the whole fam for, so forever that will be known yeah, that's as. Cool. I didn't know that in Greenberg. Yeah, yeah, Greenberg. I'm not sure what street it is because I don't know Greenberg you said you're like that. Cover that, right? I'm but we we they they that. had it already, but um, I gotta take the I gotta get the pictures off their page and right, right, right. the story's half written. I got a lot of stuff that I just gotta do. You know, this is one hand bent. So I want to say again, I really want to shout out the fathers. I want to show off my shirt. Because what are you? Shout out oh, to the fathers. Very nice. Black fathers matter. Very nice. Yes. Very nice. So, so I've been waiting like for three weeks to wear this damn <laughs> shirt. And then, and then we was like, we was going to cancel the show because, nah, we wear it. I got to wear this shirt somewhere today. Like, I got to wear this shirt. Right. So, so um, it's too cute. like I said, yo, thanks for everybody who's holding it down. Um, thank you, AJ. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Um, I think this had to do with oh. what Hector was talking about. That's the type of cop Mount Vernon needs or does not need. Oh, it must have been the cop that was cursing at the kids. Right, right. Um, um, because when I read the question, like thirty minutes after they wrote it, uh, it's right. kind of hard. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, it's kind of hard to um, do. Yeah, I got but, a lot of but comments anybody, too. I'm trying to go back to them now. Well, anybody, anything that was worth reading or they said, you know, as far as the show, feel free to read it. Like, that's what that's what I do. Just, I mean, go ahead right. and read it on the air. Um, so right here I got, um, it says, get them, Hector, speak to them. What's the topic today? Tell, oh, Rhonda, I love you. Classism, my boy P. Skrilla, shout out to you. He said, Hector, thank you for everything you do. Um, somebody said it's hard to fight a system that is embedded with racism and classism right, I wonder, I going against the grain of the stop and shake. Mm -hmm. um, they said who's... Uh, uh, what else? Um, <laughs> is he? Is this his show? He talks a lot. Who? Oh. <laughs> Me? Is it? Yes, yeah, I, they yes, asked him, yeah, they asked him I it, it's AJ's you. show. No, they asked him uh, AJ's show. Yeah, he's the man. That's the man with the plan. Black Fathers Matter. Um, yo, that's what's up. Carmen Gomez Goldberg, congratulations, actors. You deserve it. You work hard and you are so genuine. Thank you, Carmen. So that means Carmen's that. listening. Appreciate what and that, what day? That's Good the one day. That's the same. <laughs> Hi, what, Carmen. What day do you have that schedule? What day? Uh, she's coming in. Carmen Goldberg. Only I can see. Uh, July 16th, right? July 16th, Carmen. You'll be here, so I'll comment when you hear. Okay. Congratulations to you, Carmen. Good luck. Yeah. Yeah. And Good we luck to love, everybody. Baby. Yeah, we love. Oh, I see somebody said, Ron, June 20th, Hector San Diego Day. Yes. Yeah, yeah, man. <laughs> that was a blessing, man. I was so surprised. I was speechless when they told me. I was like, what? That, that's a thing? Yeah. yeah, yeah, they do that. They That's do that. They do that's that. A and and, and thing, man. people, they they actually save the date like June. June and, and they, then, they and give you a they, they give you a plaque right. or something, right? They give yeah, you some I got kind a of plaque. Proclamation that it, proclamation, you know, yeah. it, it acknowledges a bunch of stuff I do, I did, and then they proclaim that day for me, which I, I for me it's beautiful. I feel like um, now it's giving me a new goal. Every year on that day, I'm gonna reflect on what I've accomplished before that day, you know, which is blessing for me so i definitely appreciate that thank you to all my followers and supporters if it wasn't for any of y'all i wouldn't have done been able to do half of the stuff i've done um so yeah well i just want to we come into the close of the show i just want to thank everybody for listening everybody for tuning in you know um i'm glad you didn't cancel the show oh no no <laughs> we, 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 we would have postponed it not canceled oh, it but but okay. um and I know I'm going to hear when he comes back on because last year, no, 2015, we had Arts on 3rd, um, and it was um, before the, the primary. And Dame was like, you know what? Let's just enjoy Arts on 3rd. We're going to call the show. I thought I called all the guests. Chris Johnson was outside waiting for half an hour. Waiting for, Yo, man, where y'all at? So oh, I, I, I'm never going to not hear that. So, right, right. yeah, we had called everybody, <laughs> and for some reason, he did not get the memo. So, <laughs> so yeah, because he always goes, yeah, just like he canceled on me last time and didn't tell me. Right. Yeah, he always throws that out. Of, yeah, yeah, so I figure I'll throw it out this time. So, <laughs> Take Chris some of the, cool, man. Take, yeah, yeah. I, mean, I tell everybody, man, go meet You know, Chris, you know what Chris said? Cause... When everything was going crazy in Mount Vernon, 
Chris was like, oh, I just want to thank y'all for keeping the media out of Yonkers. <laughs> <laughs> yo, word up. But I want to thank everybody. And it's like, yo, it's been said by a lot of people. I think Biggie said it on one of his records. You got to do everything like it's your first time and everything like it's your last time. Right. Like I said, like today, there's a bunch of people that w was alive because of you who checked out the show for the first time. So no matter how long you've been doing it, this is show like 129 or 130. There's some people that ain't never seen us before. Right, and you got to right. do it, everything like it's your last because... Ain't nobody promised tomorrow. So, you know what I'm saying? I try to yeah, go so into go to the site and, and, and like the site, too, you know, right. so they right. can see it every week. Right. So, as I said, so, um, I just it's black. In today. It's uh, black. I set a date so we can Ugh. come back. All of y'all, please. Yeah, so the site is blackwestchester.com, online newspaper. Um, we try to hold it down on all issues dealing with the community. Blackwestchester.com. Check it out. Check it out daily. Um, we update daily dealing with things that deal with the county, deal with the black community. And like I said, um, happy Father's Day to all the fathers out there, all the fathers raising their kids, all the fathers raising somebody else's kids, all of those who hold it down. And, and shout out to all the fathers that are going through the system oh, and are being effed by the system mm, who really, it, yeah. really, really want to do a good job. They really do. But the system is just whatever. All I have to say is, yo. And and they say it's a free country. Yeah, all I got to say, and yo, Google is your best friend. Google, right. there's a bunch of advocate I'm groups sorry. to help you. And with that, you could be doing anything else right now. We decided to ride with us, and we greatly appreciate it. Black Questions to Presents, People Before Politics, every Sunday, 6 to 8, on IndemixRadio.com. Peace. 22 million black victims oh, of Americanism are waking up. And they're gaining a new political consciousness, becoming politically mature. And as they become, uh, develop this political maturity, they're able to see the recent trends in these uh, political elections. That any minority that has a block of votes that stick together is in a strategic position. And either way you go, that's who gets it. You're, you're in a position to determine who go to the White House and who stay in the doghouse. You're the one who has that power. You, you and I have never seen democracy. All we've seen is hypocrisy. When we open our eyes today and look around America, we see America not through the eyes of someone who has, who has enjoyed the fruits of Americanism. We see America through the eyes of someone who has been the victim of Americanism. We don't see any American dream. We've experienced only the American nightmare. We haven't benefited from America's democracy. We've only suffered from America's hypocrisy. And the generation that's coming up now can see it and are not afraid to say it. And I'm 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 and I'm not afraid to say it. And I'm not afraid to say it. And I'm not afraid to say it. And I'm not afraid to say it.